this is a test of how great we can be, right? Here we go. Howdy, what's up, Dylan? What's going on, dude? Not a lot. Appreciate uh, all the effort y'all have done to get this space up and uh, some more camaraderie. It's been a lot of fun this season. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. It'll it's be really fun added to keep things. winning. Man, Start. tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, we call into the show. We talk. Hey, to, Zach, are you? We talk to each other through Nick, and I'm like, "There's got to be a better way for us to like hang out, right?" So this is the best I could come up with. I feel like it works definitely. Out well. uh, it's great. What's hey, up, Zach, Irene? Are you the Zach that calls from Chicago? No, this is Zach in Atlanta. I. <laughs> I made the reference oh, to a man. toilet the other day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you? Yes, you did. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a tough game. I was. I. I let it affect me too much, and I was pretty down. You weren't alone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was kind of PTSD from the playoff game, so I get it. Hundred percent. That's exactly what struck. Absolutely destroyed my day at work here. Yeah, it's tough to watch, but it was one of those games where you're watching it and like I just sat there laughing because I didn't know what in else the to end, do. Yeah, and I told David yep. this. I was on a thing mm -hmm. with him the other day, and I, I told David I was like, "You just sit there. You're like, what can you do to sit here and laugh? Because like, it's not the end of the season. You know, it's there's a lot, a lot more of this to go. But it's like everything that we thought kind of would go wrong with the team went wrong, mm -hmm. specifically defensive tackle." And uh, God, it was a nightmare to watch. But you're like, wow, I was, I, you almost feel vindicated because you're like, holy crap, like everybody was right. <laughs> we all knew what we were talking about. Well, when uh, Kamara burst through on that screen, I literally just laughed out loud. It was just like, oh my God. <laughs> the one where Kendrick's uh, overshot, yeah. Oh my God. A screen going for that sort of yardage, please. Well, they called the perfect play because one of, I think it might have been Damone Clark. He blitzed off the left side. I don't know. It was looked like a delayed blitz, so I don't know if he was supposed to or not, but but he blitzed. Oh, it, it was and, just a uh, perfect storm of everything. The safeties, whoever, I think it was Hooker, oh. had a bad angle. You got everybody jogging except for D-Law is the only one sprinting down the field. Everyone else is just jogging slowly, waiting it's for somebody awful. else to do something. It's that play probably sums up the whole thing. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm going to send uh, – oh, Irene, i got to invite you to co-host. I'm going to send invites. Give me a second. To... Give me a second. I might um, – so I'm going to check my laptop out and see if I can get – because I can't watch uh, the game on here. So hold okay. up a sec. Well, the Jets are up 14 nothing right now. Uh, well, I was watching it, but once I got on here, because um, I'm watching it on my phone, <laughs> I'm setting up the laptop to Is do this, it. Uh... Two Aaron Rodgers touchdowns, per chance. One was. Was it? Did the, they take away Brees Hall's touchdown? Because that would suck. Hang on, y'all. Hang on. We got somebody in this in this group here. Who just joined. His name's Josh. Josh. All right, and he works for somebody called the Dallas Cowboys. I'm gonna invite him as a speaker. That's pretty damn cool. <laughs> Pretty damn cool. Movie Josh. Feel free to jump in and talk, Josh. If not, you want to hang out and listen, that's cool too, brother. But we're just talking Cowboys, watching this Jets-Patriots game, just farting around. That's still wild to see Tyron Smith in a Jets uniform. Ah. I see he's still got his uh, knee brace on his arm. <laughs> yeah, wild, the dude's a cyborg. Hello, hello. Hello. Hey. Can you hear me all right? Hey, hear you now. What's going on, dude? How are the storyliners? How you guys doing? Chilling, brother. Chilling, trying to get something going. We've had these spaces uh, kind of sporadically a couple times a month, but I'm trying to get one going every Thursday now. So, I I've never seen the uh, the X spaces, so this is brand new to me. Sweet, yeah. I uh, I let Nick know on his show. Chris Beam said he might jump in. We'll see. But uh, yeah, every Thursday at nine o'clock Eastern. So that would probably be what eight your time Central. Eight our time. Eight our time. So you're you're watching the game and doing the storyliners, right? Yeah, man. Just gonna talk about the Cowboys coming up. 
And we're going to recap this last week so we can get that off of our shoulders. If there's anything left to get off our shoulders, we've been talking we, about we all week. So. We yeah. figured How are you guys feeling about, game uh, could use some love. feeling about Sunday? Uh, I, Apprehensive? Yeah. I feel confident in the fact that their running scheme is more like heads up, helmet on helmet type deal. But our DTs are in a bad way right now. So I don't know, man. I'm nervous about that. I think there's a lot to be nervous about. I, that's a good team, and they're very desperate coming into to Arlington on Sunday. It's uh, It'll be very interesting, and I think it would be more more likely than not to, to see the Cowboys at 1-2 and two versus the Ravens at 1-3, and or at 0-3, oh if you know what I mean. I uh, what, Have you guys given your predictions yet on talking? Not yet, not yet. We'll do it tomorrow. All right, all right. I won't ask then. But, uh... I mean, I don't even know that I have a fully formed prediction yet. It, it'll just kind of come to me on the day. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. How are you guys liking this, the podcast this year so far? Fantastic. Oh, you guys are killing it, dude. You guys are killing it. It's obviously a lot more fun when we win. So <laughs> hopefully we got more of that coming. But, nah, man, you, yeah. guys are, you guys are killing it. I was actually on a cruise recently, and I was telling Nick this. I was like, I had to go buy the internet package because I was having withdrawals from y'all's podcast. Ah, oh, um, that's funny. That's funny. The, uh, the podcasts have been a game changer in Australia here. Oh, man, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that they're they're reaching all over, man. That's, that's well, great. And whenever we listen to Storyline, because, I mean, I've, of course, I'm on talking, but I'm producing with Beam all of the, the podcasts. So it's, it's, it's nice to hear on Storyline – you know how many how wide reaching the podcasts are well quite often the games here are on at uh, 10 or 11 in the morning on a monday so uh i actually record it spend the day at work listening to all the podcasts and then come home to watch the game all informed and ready to go i love that man that's awesome yeah it's been a real difference maker to the way i used to have to follow the cowboys back in the old days <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. I had to watch a, a Cowboys game in uh, Italy one time, and the uh, the game was on at 3 a.m. in Italy. Yeah, well, that was. We happened to find a bar that was open during that time that happened to be showing American football. It was crazy. Well, that was me last weekend sitting here at 3 a.m. our time. There you go. <laughs> yep. there, there you go. But uh, back when I first started following the Cowboys, there was nothing here at all. Uh, you literally got results in the local newspaper like two days after the fact. Um, I had to get uh, news agents to literally import magazines. Oh, wow. Just to have well, news. Dedication. That, that's a different level, man. That's amazing. Yeah, well, oh, we're going back 40 years, but... Uh, <laughs> it was it was crazy trying to find out what was happening, uh, and even once the internet started, it was dial up and only at the local library, and you'd sit there trying to refresh things, and it would take all day. And mm. so, compared to what there is now, it's crazy. Yeah, night and day difference. I mean, we're we're nonstop. We're our own little news organization, and I say little in jest because it's you know we're. <laughs> it, it's crazy how much content we produce on the daily. Oh yeah, but it's great. It's great. And, it's great. And diverse yeah, I mean, as well. A lot of really and diverse as well. I oh, wish 100%. some of the uh, I wish some of the sporting teams here would take a leaf out of that book and start producing more content themselves because it's fascinating for fans to get insights into how it all actually works and the background of things and um, but there's not much of that here for our sports really. Right, right. Man, uh, th th that's tough to hear. But then again, I think when you have a team like the Cowboys where it's just so the, – the, the fan base, like you, like we just talked about, the fan base is everywhere. So it's like the, the demand oh, yeah. is there and the views are there and, the, the you know, it just keeps going up and up and up. So which podcast uh... – I don't know how much information you're able to divulge, but I mean, uh, do you guys like keep track of rankings, like which podcast gets the most views and interactions and stuff? Yeah, we do. It's, it's sort of on the back end. Um, but I mean, everything is, is pretty, it, I feel like so many listeners are listening to more than one podcast. It's not like they come in and just stick around for right. 
uh, you know, hang in and then call it a day. It's like they're kind of sticking with us all day long. And it just kind of depends on the format uh, that they're listening on. You know, it's like one podcast could be doing very well on the, the website and another podcast could be doing extremely well on YouTube. You know, it all, all kind of depends on the listeners of that particular podcast. Right, right. With, with uh, Mick Shots, for instance, you know, they're doing really well in the newspaper. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Hey, can you guys hear me okay? My hey, friend. what's up, David? How you doing, brother? Hey, Josh, man, it's good to, see, good to have you in here, man. Gave us oh, thank you very much. I just wanted to stop by and see, see what this was. I literally didn't know what the space this was until right now. Yeah, man. Like Dylan was saying, man, we, we get together. We're going to be doing it more often, but we just kind of get together, chop it up. A lot of us, as you know, we call in and we don't get an opportunity to get through the storyliners all the time. For instance, I've tried to call in every single day this week and I really can't get in. And then I hear him say, phone lines are open. I'm like, dang, how come, how come I can't get through? What the heck's going on? Oh, man. But, uh, but I, I know it's busy, man. But uh, yeah, man, it's awesome well, to have you in here. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, those lines get jammed up pretty quick and uh i'm in the same studio as beam like we're in the same office so like we're just hearing the phone constantly all day and like uh you guys are calling like 30 40 minutes before the show like during talking we're we're here on the the call so it's it's cool to see you guys are such a tight-knit community man i love to see that yeah this is a good idea for nick and whoever else came up with this i mean his dad (laughs) he gave props to his dad on this too but like the show was such a cool idea and we all call in and we talk to each other through nick right so, yeah. you know, I messaged Irene one day and I was like, hey, like, you want to start this thing called Twitter community? Like, well, I don't even know what this is. But let's try it. See how many people we can get from the show in here. We can talk to each other, talk about the show, talk about the team. And uh, it kind of took off. We got like 500 something people in here. And then we, you know, we do these spaces. Sometimes we have 30, 40 people in here. Sometimes we have 10. It just depends on you know, who wants to join. But yeah, it's a really cool way for us all to kind of stay in touch and, and interact. Very cool. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to head out, but uh, thank you so much for having me on. I, I appreciate it. Uh, um, really looking forward to hearing y'all's calls this week and next week and uh, for the rest of the season, man. Go Cowboys. All right, Josh. Thanks for stopping by. See you, man. You're always Thank you, welcome. Thanks. Good work, Josh. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, man. Hey, he's he's definitely not joking about calling like all day because I mean, as you guys probably know too, like I listen to like, I mean, all all the podcasts, but even like way late in the day, like the Players Lounge, and like Beam will unmute to like speak speak to them, and I still hear the phones going off. I'm like, who the heck is calling right now? I don't even think they accept calls. But you know what? I will say that um, during the Cleveland game. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't even during the Cleveland game. It was after the Cleveland game. I went to a bar and I was like having some drinks with my buddy watching the game. And then after the game, I like looked at my phone and I was like, what the heck? I'm on a phone call. And I looked <laughs> and I was calling the show somehow. I don't even know how I like butt dialed the storyline. So I'm probably that guy who like Got calls my accident. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, dude I, I don't, don't know. These days. It could be Michael in Colton, California calling from the day before. <laughs> You make sure he gets first, right? That yeah, guy, yeah, man. we were talking about that earlier. That's so. You know what's funny. wild? If you call too early, they don't pick up the line. So I don't know how he's got that figured out. Because then I, I try calling. I so like I, what was it? Wednesday, Tuesday. I tried calling twice before the show, and they didn't pick up. So I called too early. It was like fifty five, fifty six, and uh, I called again, and then it was busy. So I'm like, how do you figure out like the right time to? get first in line and if you don't get first man it's hard to even figure out now i had a hundred and something dials on monday it's wild yeah man i'm convinced that like um i either watch on twitter whenever he like starts or i watch on the actual website but i feel like there's like there's the delay so i'm trying to work with that but then i'm like every time i call is it delayed more i'm like dude i have no idea bro i'm just here's the deal I, i think i unlocked the key today man and everybody keep this a secret. Don't spread this. But I think, like, if you listen to after your call, um, if you if you don't hit the hang-up button, like, you wrap up your point and don't hit the hang-up button, they keep you on the line for, like, 15, 20 seconds before they, you get the click and it hangs up on you. So I think you might even need to wait a little bit after somebody's done talking to call in to try to get in. I think. I think. I I'm going to put it to the I test. Do that. No, I do that kind of because, like, as soon as they're wrapping up, they're like, as soon as I hear them, like, all right, Nick, blah, blah, blah. Like, as soon as I hear that, I start calling. And I'm like, I'm going to call 10 times straight. And if I don't get through, likely he's already moved on to, like, the next caller or somebody else is on. So I try that. But 
at the same time, I'm literally telling you that it doesn't work. So I don't even know why I'm <laughs> trying to explain what I do because it don't work, man. <laughs> I think you just got to close your eyes and keep hitting the button until you hear that ringtone. Dude, I celebrate when I hear it go start ringing. Like, it's a, it's a relief after all the attempts that you have to do sometimes to get in. Yeah, but is he, like, screening phone calls? Because sometimes it's like, ring, 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 ring. And then it's like, wait a minute, oh, yeah, why did no it go doubt. to... They don't yeah. answer. And then, when it like, rings and they don't pick up, it is like the tenth ring in. I'm like, bro, I got it to ring, and he's not gonna pick up the phone. Come on, dog, you're killing me. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't just happen to me. Okay, I thought they may have caller ID or something, and they're like, David from Fort Worth, do not pick up or something. I was like, dang. <laughs> they do have I've caller ID. Short. <laughs> they do, because mine comes up as Sarah, and so he told me, he's like, I know it's you, because it comes up as Sarah, Northport, Florida, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, I'm not Sarah. <laughs> That's funny, man. Yeah. <clears throat> so what do y'all think about um well shoot, I don't even know. We could talk about Cowboys Ravens, I guess. Talk about the game, whatever. Let's let's talk about something. Well Dylan, if you don't mind, before we do that, I w- because I couldn't get in today, I want to talk about a very heavy topic that was talked about today on the show. I think it was today. <clears throat> um about like is this a must win? Do they have to win? Can they just play good and not win? Does it matter? And I don't know, man. I kind of feel like I understand what Rob was – and I feel bad because he's not here, like, speaking on him. He's not here. But I kind of understand what he was saying as far as, like, no, this ain't Pee Wee, you know, oh, let's just play hard and have fun. I I, I understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, it's like I feel like the people who were calling and talking about that was really just basically saying, like, okay, if we don't win, we don't win. But we need to see some progression. You know what I'm saying? We need to see some signs that this team's moving in the right direction. And of course, that's not going to count as a win on the win column, but it's going to make us feel better about the loss, which I know sounds crazy, especially We're to the old school. Getting moral victories opinion. again? Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I'm, I'm not saying like we should celebrate a moral victory, but if you go out there and you get punched in the mouth by another hard-nosed running football team, I mean, that's more detrimental than if you go out there and you lose 31-29. You were there in is. It. You know Definitely saying? degrees to this, for sure. If, mm-hmm. if if Baltimore come out and do to us what the Saints did last week at home again, that's a disaster. Um, but if we lose in a tough, hard-nosed battle against a really good football team and we go out next Friday, Thursday, your time, and, and beat the Giants and we're 2-2 two and two after the schedule we've had, Eh, it's okay. Well, here's the thing, yeah. too. Keep this in mind. Uh, normally, I'm not a moral victory guy, but this is an instance where this is a tough opponent who's desperate as hell, and uh, it's, they're an AFC team. So if you lose, it's not mm. the end of the world. It's it's not really that big of a deal in the grand scheme. Of course, at the end of the season, you might need a game, um, and this might cost you that, that game, but... That game. In, in terms of tiebreakers and standings and all that, it's not last week's way either. worse. Yeah, at, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, and like if Rob was in here and I could talk to him, and hopefully he joins later because I I would present it this way. He messaged. It might me. be a little dramatic in, in a little bit. Got you, and it might be a little dramatic, you know, my stance on it. But it's kind of the same stance as I had when I think it was Michael from Colton, California, that I was talking about. Oh, the um, regular season don't matter. Playoff season, the playoffs are what matters. Yada yada. yada. And I told Nick, I said. It, Anybody who has that, who shares that sentiment, if the regular season don't matter, then don't watch. Don't watch a single game until we either make the playoffs, and if we don't make the playoffs, then you then you lose a whole season where you can't watch. But it does matter because you do want to watch. And the same thing goes, in my opinion, for the for the the wins and losses. Like if you don't care if we lose by a little bit or lose by a lot, then don't watch and wait until after the game and see if it's a W or see if it's an L because that's obviously the only thing that it, people may care about. You know what I'm saying? So. I hope that makes sense. Like, I'm not trying to be harsh, but does that make the re- sense? Like, the, the way you lose season, that. It has Rob. to matter, though. Yeah, Rob's there here. He What's up, Rob? We're talking about uh, your topic today, baby. Well, not yours. You just piggybacked off it, but. But before he gets uh, speaking rights, who, who, was, who was going right now? Yeah, uh, the regular season has to matter because that's your ramp up. That's your preparation. That's your scheme setting. That's everything you're working on. For the playoffs, uh, you know, it, that's how you evolve your team through the regular season. That's how you learn about what other teams are doing that you're going to face in those postseason games. Yeah. So it completely matters. 
Yeah, I think that whole thing is silly. And I think anybody oh, who says yeah. I'm not interested until the postseason, well, then I don't want to hear you talking about when they lose, when they win. And as, I don't want to hear as about a years. fan too, I've lived through a one and fifteen season. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. You but, guys, you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got you. Hey, real, hey, real how quick, you Rob, Rob, before you go, going, Gov- Governor, what's your uh, actual name? Uh, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's easy to remember. Cool, cool, cool. So, Rob from Sydney, I guess. Rob from Sydney. I hear the accent. <laughs> so. Oh, you cut out there, Rob from Vegas. Okay. So I heard you talking about what I, what I called in today. And uh, I guess what pisses me off is we're not the Carolina Panthers. You know, we're not. The giant, when, this team is too good to be looking for moral victories. It was kind of what I was kind of saying today. Uh, those days are over. You know, this team, we're expecting to be in the playoffs. Uh, we're expecting to win the division. And it's time for this team to, to put up. We keep seeing the same thing over and over again. Dominate bad teams like Thursday. Unless something catastrophic happens, they're going to hammer the Giants. Uh, but it's, it'd be nice to start seeing te- this team beat the 49ers, beat the Ravens, beat, you know, the Lions, teams like that, because that's what you're going to have to do. It And that's and all I was saying was that's what they need to prove to themselves. They don't need to prove it to us. You know, we're just fans. But there's got to be when they get on the field with San Francisco, there has to be doubt because they've been dominated. And until you beat the bully, you know, this is well, what happens that, until they beat a team like the Ravens, who does what we our defense is bad at, teams are going to just keep doing it. There is a definite soft underbelly to our team in recent years, in my opinion. Uh, there's a there's a saying here to that uh, you drop your bundle when things get tough, and I see that in this football team that when things get hard. When we're getting smacked in the mouth, there's a real tendency for guys to just <laughs> drop the bundle and say, "Well, this is too hard." See, I don't, I don't, I don't like to say like somebody. I, I forgot. I think it was Anthony. Maybe he's saying guys are garbage. These are the greatest athletes. I, I don't know if everybody's played football. I mean, Irene, did you play football? If you count some flag football, but yeah, no, not really. <laughs> I do. I do count that. I used to okay, cook my- a little bit. So everybody wants to be good. Everybody's trying to win. It's just, yes, talent matters. But at this level, they're all talented. It's a lot of it is will. And the mm-hmm. Cowboys, I always put it towards cars because I'm a car guy. The Cowboys are like a Porsche. And when they play other teams that are like a Porsche, they do very well. It's when they played at F-150 trucks. When they go up against teams that are not going to be flashy. They're just going to beat on you. They don't want to do that. A guy brought up a good point about Micah Parsons. I love Micah, but he's absolutely right. If Micah's not sacking the quarterback, he looks like he's miserable out there, like he's having no fun. We could be winning by 30. Uh, um, Micah, Micah just wants to rush the quarterback. He always wishes it was just third and seven. And I don't know how you change that mentality. How, you know, And, and if, if Zimmer can't do it, I don't know who can because Nobody. Uh, you, you know, because the bottom line is, I'm sure Zimmer's saying to him and, and everybody else, you the uh, rushing the quarterback is dessert, but you guys got to stop the run first to have that opportunity. Yeah, yeah you got to earn it. And I don't know, they they just don't have that mentality. Now I don't know if that's going to be if they get rid of uh, Mike McCarthy and they bring in. A, a different head coach. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how you change that. Because to me, that's a mentality. That's that's a mentality. Like you look at certain teams, like the 49ers, and they, they they're going to play hard on defense. That line, those linebackers, and and it's they're going to make it's going to be a long day. You may beat them, but it, it's going to be a long day. And, and same thing with the Ravens. You understand? They're they're they're. I like the, they're like a blue collar team. And then you look at the Cowboys, and they're not. They're fast break basketball. That's how they want to play, and it, that works. If the if this team gets a, this team has to have a ten point lead or more for this defense to excel. If it's if it's less than that, where teams say, "No, nah, we'll still we'll still run," 
then this defense will suffer because they're just not built to uh, to play like that. And so, in this so league, ten like, point leads are rare. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like Micah. Honestly, if you watched um, the game a couple of times or watched film or whatever you guys do, I feel like Micah was one of the better players on defense this last game. Yeah, I know he was. that nobody. He I was. know that like a lot of people. A lot of people didn't do well, so it's kind of like, like I like to say, it's like picking out the shiny garbage or the shiny turd, but he was one of the better defensive players. So, like, my question to you, Rob, would be, like, if you think he looks miserable, but he's still one of the better players on the defense, do you expect him to, like, do the lion crawl after he makes a tackle, or what do you want him to do to no, look no, more it's, it's, appeasing it's to you? No, no, it's not about that. It's more on the sideline. You know, um, you're, the way you look on the sideline and the way you interact on the sideline matters, you know. Micah, like it or not, and I know he doesn't really want to be, he's the leader of the defense. He's the best player on the defense, and I understand he's young, but he's the leader, and he needs to do that. He needs to get in everybody's face and go, let's go. We gotta, you, you can't be sitting there just because you didn't get a sack or they're not throwing the ball for you to get a sack. You have to play hard. I, the problem with Micah is not that he's not he didn't play good. It's just that they just took advantage of his size. And that was always my worry. You know, him, he slimmed down. So now he's like 245. I wanted him to go up to 270 if he's going to strictly be a defense. Because at the end of the day, the problem with this team is we say, oh, Zim is going to move him around. But he really can't because we have no pass rush without Micah. We've got no so ends. If you, so, exactly. So, so at the end of the day, he's your best defensive end rusher. Well, teams... Teams are just going to – they're not going to run away from him anymore. They're just going to run at him, he's, which he's wears him down. So he's about 20 pounds lighter than your average DN. Yeah, he's, and too, he's just too small. He wears down, and then towards the end of the game, towards the end of the season, he's Don't not say the same. it, Rob. Don't make me say it. But, no, 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 no. But at no, the same time – No, like... no. I, I, know, I know analytics. He's there. But – Not rushing He wise, may be though. a, you're cur- a you're step correct. slower, you know. But – so, yes, we talk about that. Yes, you can move them around when you got a lead. When you have a lead where you know they're going to throw, then move them everywhere. But let's say he's, he's going to line up, start of the game, he's going to line up at defensive end, and they're going to run a lot of RPOs at him because he hasn't played it very well, especially against Philly. Which game do you think uh, he, so uh, he played better in, week one or week two? It's hard to tell because week one they just dominate because – Watson was so bad. He was just awful. Sure. So the whole defense looked good. Uh, last week, the Saints, let's face it, the Saints were smart. The Saints said, we're going we're gonna to pound you. And then what I said on the radio is good quarterbacks could make throws, especially with play action. And Derek Carr is, is, a, is better than a good quarterback. And he just hate us up. So I thought he may have been, he was more active this week like, like actually working, you know, stopping the run. But it was right. ugly because, yeah, Damone Clark, I can't stand. Same. Why he's on the field, I have no idea. Let me say and though, I don't. I, the the game was on the three defensive tackles in the middle and on nobody else because when you go, I watched the film. When you go watch the film, you could have put Brian Anger, freaking uh, Trent Sieg in there, and uh, and Aubrey, and you would have had the same result because those guys were getting on ev- – it's it's every snap without a break. They're five yards downfield every single time uh, or on their back flopping around like a fish. And um, I brought up the Micah thing because I thought it was interesting because when the, when the whole team plays good, Micah really shines typically. And if he's not getting the stats, he's helping other people get the stats. But I thought it was interesting because the team played so bad against New Orleans, it's hard to decipher really if anybody played good. But I looked at PFF, he had a 75.8 rating in week one. He had an 86.2 in week two, and it was because his tackling was much better and his run defense was much better, which surprised me. I was surprised to see that. He's always, he's always going to be the best player on the field on defense. You What's just crazy need someone is... to make a play is a problem. And is he yeah. going to be that guy? Well, like When the team sucks, is he going to be the guy to dig them out of that hole? Or is he going to be the guy that when they have the lead uh, or when they're all playing well that he's going to you know, be the cherry on top? Well, on a passing down, on a passing down, yes. You, we've seen it. We've seen it last year against the Chargers when he had to get pressured. And they, But on, on running – 
this team is just bad. It's funny how we were praising Jordan Phillips in the preseason. And even I said, because I went to the Raider game here, I said, yeah, this guy looks good. And then you see him. I've never seen uh, anything it, so bad in my life, specifically. Real him. life. I know you pointed it out and I watched it. I said, the dude's in the and end. What, it, there was like six plays like that, too. That was just one of the worst ones. But uh, Linval Joseph and had just as many. Linval Joseph. Linval Joseph. Listen, you can't pull those guys off the couch. They're out of shape. He's too slow. When he said, yeah, when he said, no, nah, when, when they asked him, you want to you come play? Nah, not now. Because he didn't want to go to camp. Of course not. He you just go, wants to get a pay. Would you could have watched that same play that I posted making fun of. Uh, I don't want to say making fun of, but I guess I kind of was making fun of him. Uh, Phillips. You go look at next to him, Joseph. And he lets not just the center get away and then go and uh, combo block to the second level without even having to touch Joseph. But then he lets the guard cross his face too. And by the time he even starts to move, he's let two offensive linemen run by him and hasn't even gotten his hands up yet. Like he's just too that slow now at this position, point. That's the position. That's why we were screaming in the offseason. You can't really draft that position and it is successful right off the Look at it, exactly, the Eagles. Yep. You have that. That's a man's position. It sounds weird, but that is a grown ass man playing that. And you need to go get a guy. I was, of course, I was praying for him to go get Allen from Washington. You needed a guy that that's that's why you invest in those guys, because they're very hard to get and they're hard to develop from college. So it's just like, you know, we, they keep saying, oh, we're going to we'll get a guy. Mozzie, let's face it. Mozzie's been a disappointment. Yeah, Mazi is is not good, and he he would be cut if he wasn't a first round pick, probably or practice squad or who knows what. That's why I wish they would have invested in that position, and maybe next year, who knows? But you, unfortunately, now you're stuck. What you got is what you're stuck with. Yeah, you may bring in Carlos Watkins. He may give you something a little bit, but you can't fill that during the year because teams A ain't going to give them up, and B you can't pull the guy off the couch. Now he's way out of shape they're gonna have to hope and pray that they can get a couple of stops early in the game right and that the offense can put up 10 to 14 points on their first two drives yes. that's how they're gonna win games um florida Tony, sunshine Tony. I, I saw your hand has been up for a little bit what you got for us well see i'm an old school cowboy and i guess I guess here's my here's my disappointment is I'm used to the Cowboys defense from the seventies and the nineties. <laughs> and when they get punched in the mouth, they punch back. And we just I haven't seen that in forever. And I just don't know that we have those players that will do that. I just don't. Can I tell you something? I'm 33. I've never seen this team punch back. I don't even know what that means. So. Oh yeah, no, I'm 58 <laughs> years old, and I grew up on Cowboys, um, and I watched it in the 70s, and I watched it in the 90s. No, and... Dylan, you've seen it. You've seen it when Parcells was the head coach, the, yeah. with Jay Ratliff and, yeah. and uh, Brady oh, yeah. James. In this 80s, defense yeah. was yeah, tough. In the 90s. Yeah. And I, I'm a firm believer. You take on the personality of your head coach. Yep. And you look at when Jimmy Johnson was there. But that was a different game. That was a different era of they practiced harder than they played. But uh, obviously the 70s, those guys had to play just to have a job or they were going to go serve McDonald's. Right. You know? But even still, you're talking for Sal, Jimmy Johnson. Yes. They, they, they got punched in the face and they punched back. Yeah, yeah, but that's we don't, but that's we what don't, I'm saying. We don't, we don't have we don't those have players. That. No, we don't have, but we don't have that team. It's the culture around the team is more for flash than for, you know, I'm not saying Jerry. Jerry and would you know what? want I do. I play some of that. I play some. I play some of that on Jerry because Jerry makes it the country club in that stadium. He, it's the wine and cheese group that goes to watch those games that can afford majority that can afford those tickets. And I, I also some yeah. of on him. I, well, I also it's it's the salaries. I don't know how you discipline players making twenty, sure. thirty million dollars. I don't. What do you What do you do 
unless you're going to take playing time away. And you're not going to because they're stars. Well, and it's a generational you know, thing the, too. You can't talk to these yeah. guys, even just without the salary, but you can't talk to them. You can't coach them the same way. Look at what, uh, who was it? Was it Tua? I forget who said it, but somebody came out recently and said, you know, the other coach put him down a lot and it, it made him feel bad. He lost mm-hmm. confidence because of it. And you yeah, can't. That was Tua. It was Tua, yeah. And you just can't talk Tua. to guys like yeah. that anymore. You know, you, you've got to be kind of soft with them and, and stroke their ego a little bit. And, and I and I know. understand it from coaching, coaching, you know, kids, my my kids in the high school. You you I would have to treat one kid maybe different than this kid. So I understand that part. But you're absolutely right. You know, these guys with the greatest you know, they've been great since they're five years old. So they've been praised. So they're not used to, you know, f- first of all, they're not used to failing. Right. So yeah. just right there, man, that, Caleb that Willems wrecks is going them. through it right now. You know that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I totally agree. I, I mean, I when I found out he was going to Chicago, I was like, I don't see it. Here's a USC West Coast. And I loved watching him at USC. He paints his fingernails. Not that that's a big deal. But you're going to Chicago, blue collar, Mike Dick. Uh, you know, they, those fans... <laughs> If you it's lose, it's the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, if, they're if not, he's winning, I don't, if he's winning, yeah, he's like hell yeah. yeah. But winner, once they start they're losing, winning. yeah, oh yeah, they're yeah, gonna come after that's him. That's the thing. And, and wait till it gets ten below zero out there. I mean, that's that was the only thing. I just thought, I don't know, I, this kid. But that's the one thing I love about Dak Prescott. Well, I, I don't. You know, I mean, Dak is a grown quick. man. He acts like a grown man, and I don't think the money ever changed him from going from a million to forty to 60 now is he good enough to win a super bowl i don't know do i do i think so sure but will he ever i I, who knows i mean right now the answer is no yeah let me uh touch on some of the stuff that you guys uh were talking about because i couldn't get in um one uh are we are we gonna act like I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I understand like coaches and stuff like that create the culture, and the culture makes you be who you who like punch people in the mouth makes a team. But like, we're not about to act like we haven't had t- players that can come up here and rah rah and punch people in the mouth. Like Jason Witten wasn't one of those guys who were gonna roll over. You know what I mean? Um, Zach Martin isn't one of those guys. Tyron Smith wasn't one of those guys. You know how Tyler you quantify Shreddy that, David? Is you look yes, at the, Bryant wasn't one of those guys. Look at the 2014 season and how many close games they won. That speaks to the toughness of that team. The defense wasn't great. The offense was really good. Defense was okay, but they won a lot of close games that year, and that that was yes, a tough team. And, and the head coach was the clapper. So yeah. I don't think it has much to do with the head coach. The dude went to freaking Stanford or whatever. Yeah, but wait, the guys that preppy. you just named, a lot of them came from Bill Parcells' era. Tony Romo, Jason Witten. I mean, Parcells. Well, Bill Parcells wasn't there. He, it wasn't his no, culture. But, this was but past him, is, past Wade Phillips. That, you know. Nah, 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 nah. Tony Romo was Tony Romo wouldn't let anybody punch him in the mouth when Wade Phillips was here. You know, Jason Witten wouldn't let anybody punch him in the mouth when Wade Phillips was here. Des Bryant came in on his rookie year, was talking about I'm not going to hold anybody's shoulder pads. Yada yada. Him and Roy Williams got into it. He didn't know that was just normal rookie hazing. But from the moment he stepped in, he wasn't going to let nobody run him over. So I don't think it's just a coach's thing. I don't think it's a Jerry thing necessarily. I think you either got it in you or you don't. And I and and, and I say that not to just be like. You know, oh, I, I agree with, with you guys. Yeah, yeah, I say that not to just say like I disagree with you guys completely, but mm-hmm. I say that because I have faith that we might have some of those players on this team. They just haven't got a lot of playing time this season. Ferguson is one of those guys on offense that I feel like is not going to let someone punch him in his mouth because he's going to get up, he's going to signal first down, and he's going to signal that first down right to a defender like he did last season during the Seattle Seahawks. Wanye Thomas, oh, if he gets playing time, is that guy. Wanye Thomas. I think Jordan Lewis is a lot of people don't really like him, but Jordan Lewis is going to bust through, uh, you know, mm. bust through a slot receiver trying to block him. He's going to make a tackle. He's getting someone's face. Well, if you I don't like Jordan Lewis, some... you got to watch some more. Jordan Lewis, Jordan, Jordan Lewis is one of my favorites because here's a guy always on a one year deal, doesn't bitch and moan, and he goes out and he performs. Yeah, not, not only that, but I mean, year after year after year after year, and I don't know if it's consecutive, like I'm saying, maybe that's ex- exaggerative, but they're always drafting corners also. So yeah, he, he, try to get rid of him for four years. Yeah, he could he could act like Jason Witten did when Witten was the, supposed to be the leader of that tight end room, and instead of leading the tight ends, he would basically just you know block him out and make sure that no one was going to take his spot. But Jordan Lewis doesn't do that. I mean, if you've watched the sound from the sidelines from the first week when uh, Carson's almost had that pick, 
Jordan Lewis went over to him on the sideline. You're talking about sideline, Rob, like people who rob on the sideline. Jordan Lewis went over there, congratulated him, and told him they can't F at you. They can't F at you. Like, that's the type of leader. That's the type of guy that you want. And I understand that's what you're talking about, like you want from Parsons. But I don't know, man. Maybe Parsons isn't that guy. You know what I mean? Like, No, he's too- not. He's not like that. He's – he's. I, I honestly – I think he's too nice on the field. I would love to see him be meaner. But I, I grew up in an era where – my favorite player was Lawrence Taylor, even though I'm a Cowboys fan since I'm five. But I loved Lawrence Taylor. He'd scare the hell out of everybody. That was that ear that. Michael, I don't. I guess what I'm saying is, I think the Cowboys need to beat teams like Ravens on Sunday to become what we're talking about. Until they do it, because I think if they do it, they stop the run and they go out and they and they they fight back or whatever we want to call it. We're just using that term and and win the game. I think they'll they feel better about themselves saying, hey, wait a minute, they're not the same pushover. And then I think they could snowball it and carry it. But until they do, this is what they're gonna hear. And you start doubting yourself. I'm I'm just sorry, this is just natural. You just start doubting yourself if you keep losing in the same way. Well, my other point too, with the Cowboys from the nineties, if you look at some of the old old videos, you will look at Troy Aikman. Michael Irvin, they will call the players out on the sidelines. If there's a bad game, you would see the players calling every, each other out. Like, come on. Like, get your, basically, get your head out of your ass. Do your job. Get your head in the game. You don't see any of that on well, the sidelines. Well, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's. I know what you're saying, but you're right. But that's an indictment of modern players. That's not that's like, not like true though, because the, if they like if they the actually filmed it, I bet you you do see that. I bet you you do see some of that, but they don't show that when you're watching the game. But I, no, but I do think I do think that she has a point though as well because even I mean not if if we're not even just talking about the Cowboys, if we're just talking about other teams. I mean, if you think about like the real hard nosed guys from back in that maybe not the nineties because honestly I'm 33, I don't really remember the nineties that much. But I could say late nineties, early 2000s. If you talk about like players like Ray Lewis would get in people's faces, Ed Reed would get in people's faces, Brian Erlacher would get in people's faces, and I know that these are all Hall of Fame type guys. I, but, I was just gonna say. Yeah, but these <laughs> they're great. Is that what they do? That's yeah, the, yeah, that's, that's the difference. Right now, every Dallas Cowboy is in the same boat. None of them had won anything. So, it's it's like it's like when Bill Belichick walks in the room. He could walk into the if he became the Cowboys coach next year. He walks into the room as soon as he stands up and flashes all those rings. Everybody shuts up. Because it's Bill Bell. Same thing with Tom Brady. Tom Brady walks into the room and he tells you this is how it's going to be. You know who that is. We don't have anybody like that. We don't. There's nobody that could say this is what I did to become this. They're all in the same boat. Um, so, and the coach, yeah, he's got a ring, but Mike McCarthy doesn't give me the impression that he's uh, throwing chairs at in the locker room or anything like that. So from I mean, it, I saw I, I saw him almost slam a ref the other, like a couple of years back I remember that but no you're right I mean um he does seem I mean I don't know I mean, I I I actually I really like Mike McCarthy honestly man he's gotten you multiple 12 and 5 seasons you know what I mean like with you know the issues that we've had you know offensively and defensively you know rebuilding this offensive line you know what I mean defensive line obviously really really sucks you know like I mean I think he's a decent coach now will he be oh, able no, to do what it takes he's better than decent you're absolutely yeah. right well, now, if, he was he... Coaching, if he was coaching for the New York Giants right now, they'd be raving how great he is if they went 12 and 5 three years in a row. But because of. Well, what happened? And, you know, you I, I get it. <laughs> but no, I think Mike McCarthy's a very good coach. But I want to see him now. You're the, o, you're the OC. You need to fix this offense. You need to get this thing going. You need to pass the ball and uh, pass first, run run second. You need to unleash your $60 million quarterback with some RPOs. Some, they didn't do a single one last week. Unleash CD. You, now this is where you got to earn your money. You wanted a quarter plays? Now let's go. Let's do it. Get motion. Get everything rolling. Because you he should know by now, hey, this, this defense ain't going to pitch a shutout. To good team, we need to score. I'm yeah. with you, man. I'm watching. I was watching the 
the Ravens and the Raiders, and I'm like, how does Gardner Minshew run more than Dak at this point? It's crazy. Yeah, and and I get it. You know, I don't I don't want to right? run a lot, but last year I thought he ran more than the last few years. I I thought what made Zach so great last year was him running. You know, he threw he did everything. This year, not so much. But I think you need to get back to that. You need to start playing like he's a kid again, and just let it fly, let it go. Yeah, but that's my feeling. thing. I feel like I feel like we wait too long to get into the playbook. Like we got to cook from the jump. Like why, why are we keeping stuff in the back pocket? Let's unleash Turpin, Dak, get on the move. You know, does uh, does McCarthy's game need a running game though to set itself because we don't have one well this is well, the thing with the running yeah. game i i feel like we have a decent offensive line they're grading out pretty well <clears throat> on pff against uh, you know run blocking um the issue is the scheme the scheme blows uh we don't use the guys the way they should be used you saw it with pollard last year it's a lot of inside runs it's just like the ravens it's all inside runs but the ravens have lamar jackson so they can run a little more option and outside stuff but derrick henry doesn't go outside and our offense shouldn't be – we have we have athletic – first off, we have two rookies. So they're very young, very athletic guys, and they can they can pull and do whatever. Um, we need to get our backs out in space. Specifically, if Deuce is going to get touches, yeah, shoot him through the A-B gap at times, but also use him to his, his, uh, his skill set, how it dictates he should be used, get him out on screens, get him out in the open. And, uh, and see what he can do. But we're just like, all right, we're going to run A, B gap. Hey, maybe a C gap every now and then and see what happens. There's nothing to the outside unless it's an end around. And then your receivers can't block. So <laughs> there's uh, three guys that can't block on the outside right now. And so now we're struggling there as well with the – specifically last week with Cooks not scoring on that end around. I think what else is hurting them too is is Zeke in a way. You know, Zeke comes out, he's the starter. I agree with you, Rob. Yeah. And – and I, I like Zeke. Zeke's not going to hurt you. He's great at pass protect. Zeke uh, didn't start last game. No, he didn't start last game. Something must have been up there. But my thing with Zeke is, you, they know, listen, he's going to give you two yards, two yards. And then now it's third and six, third and seven. We need to come out. I would love to see them come out. Throw, throw on first down. And you're right. I don't see why we can't run left. You got the best, one of the best guards in football. And you got this young left tackle who is very athletic. Let's go. Center. Let's try to get wide. I mean, yeah, you got to you got to be brutal on this. Running back is a young man's game now. Yep. Yes. And yep. we don't have young men running the ball. Well, we got one, but he's only five foot five. And well, yeah. see, and I think you can do some I'm damage. sorry, just isn't it? I, I, do, I, I know he's I, five I, foot five, but I think even running in the A B gap, yeah, he can do damage. You just got to get him. He some... can if you've made the path already. Correct. With he... someone with a bit more substance, and I just. Well, I have a hard it. time believing that Cooper BB and Tyler Smith and Zach Martin to an extent, not to what he used to be able to do, but you're telling me those three guys can't move some people off the ball to create some holes. They absolutely are, but I don't think the guys that are coming behind them have the lateral or the speed of feet to take right. advantage of the space. They're so just running into darkness. That's where I, I think like that the, uh, Hunter Lipke gets some carries. I, I agree. mean, thank you. The kid in yeah. college, he's an Ooh. athlete. See, the problem is. As soon as they, they need a real back, back, man. His career is a real back. We need, we need a real back. Someone. I know, but you're not. Get, you can't get a real back this year. Well, they, we need to trade for someone. Did you, you see my? Did you see my running back tonight? The guy I wanted, he was right there. Well, Which we, one? Well, we would have got him. He's playing tonight. His name is Braylon Allen. Braylon Allen. Oh, he's my guy. Braylon. Too. He's right yeah. there. This the guy I was. I said we could get him right there in the fourth. Here's why they He'll won't. Be right there waiting here's for why us. they won't make a trade because next year's draft is going to be absolutely stacked with running backs. So they're going to suffer this year, and then they're going to pick a guy next year and have him for four or five years, depending on when they pick him. They're practice. They're practice squad guys. They're better than some of the guys that we got right now, bro. No doubt. Yeah, but no doubt. but then again, yep. I don't think they <laughs> they don't really. They're not a running team. They don't really emphasize the run. You McCarthy's got, like I said, scheme you got, sucks, and you don't have a real running back. So put yeah, those two yeah. things together, and bada, bada, bada boom. It's and so that's good. why tr yeah, yeah. stop trying to manufacture it. Let it come naturally. Your best thing is throwing the football. Throw the ball, get a lead, then you could run the ball. But you cannot try to run two yards, two yards, and now every down is thirty. So they got if they're gonna throw the ball though. They got to figure out cooks because CDs can get locked up. I mean, I'm not gonna. Yep. It's not his fault if he's getting double teamed and all that. He's still making that's plays where I here think and there. Turpin, 
They need a guy that Turpin's not reliable though because he's they dropping balls. They need to balls. put Florne in. I agree. Somebody, that, somebody that's that what I'm getting at. Five yard pass and he could turn it into ten. What I'm no, getting at is the guy put Florne in the game. You need Ferguson to not get hurt. Yeah. Agree with that? Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, absolutely. We need, we need to see Cooks underneath on a play in which we he throws it to Rico on the outside on some wheel route. And and Cooks is running butt naked underneath. We could have got 20, yard, 20, 30 yards on that play, man. Probably a touchdown. Maybe I don't know. Because he's wide open right up under the play. If you watch it right on 20, uh, hour 22. And it's they, like. They very, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The one where he the throws ball. it to, to Rico, right? And it gets batted down. No interference somehow. Um, but, yeah, I saw Cooks wide open on that same play. I saw the same thing. But, I, was like, hey, I, got a, I got a two-part question real quick. One, am I the only one that remembers how terrible this offensive this offense was at the beginning of last season? Like everybody talks about the offense last season, but it's like y'all only remember the last like. But here's the games. thing, though, David. I I I chalk that up to Brandon Cooks and Dak Prescott not having the chemistry because they figured it out by weeks what six. Mm -hmm. But they should have that chemistry now, and they did great in in training camp. I feel like they should have came into this season with a bit more chemistry. Cooks isn't going to yes. get the targets, right? He's he yes, was a three four reception a game guy last year. Uh, but, but they're not playing zero. in the deck yard. They're playing real NFL football with two rookies on the offensive line, with new new players across from them, new players on their team. Like, like you don't just like, like it's that, that's that, I mean, like Rob said, for the, for the people who have played football. Like, just because you were great your junior year, your team was great your junior year, doesn't mean you're going to be great your senior year. You're going to get new players. You're going to get players that left. You're going to be playing against different players. You know what I mean? Like, and then it's not like McCarthy was like, hey, this worked last season, so let me just circle this whole playbook and just drag it over to next season and hope that people don't adjust to it. No, like, you, it's chess. You have to anticipate people are going to adjust to your scheme and you implement new things into your scheme. And this is the growing plan, the growing pains of an off season where your wide receiver was gone, you have new players on the offensive line, you put new wrinkles into your scheme, and you're you ha you're gonna go through those growing pains. Like, to me, I'm not worried about the offense as much as other people seem to be worried about it. I I will say that I agree to an extent about Cooks, but that that's only because I also feel like when Randall Cobb came here. Dallas didn't really use him well either. Like, there's wide receivers that have had success in other places and then come here, and they, like, just don't really do much, and I'm not sure why. I would like I think, we knew, I think we used Cobb very well. Other than a couple of plays that year, he would have probably had 1,000 yards if we, if we were Cobb. He got, like, three touchdowns called back on, on bad – I mean, um, back – well, I mean, we thought were bad calls, but if it wasn't for that, he would have probably had 1,000 yards that year. I think he, figured he worked out pretty well for us at that time. They, I would like to in the brief time crossing crossing plays like the Saints did, where it the hardest play to cover and one on you know man to man is when the guy runs across the field because you're always going to be behind him. And I would love to see them do that with a Turpin, where it's really just a five yard pass. But if he if you hit him in stride, he has the ability to turn up field. Or or C D Lamb instead of trying to throw the ball twenty yards down the field all the time, especially if they're double covered, I love to see them do a you know a bunch formation and one guy just shoots across the field it's an easy throw and he and you know you break a tackle uh it's for some reason they don't put that I, i'd like to see that too depending on the week and the scheme um david i'll say this though to your point i agree with you that there's going to be some growing pains because they have these these young offensive linemen specifically the left tackle center um they don't really have a running back so i don't i don't know if running back is necessarily going to be a growing pain versus just it is what it is and hopefully somebody steps up at some point or they figure out how to use them appropriately um my only concern is that like we have a i think this is pretty apparent we have a massive gap at defensive tackle teams are going to expose us on that until we can start playing from a lead like we did last year so whatever rust they have whatever uh development they need to do chemistry they got to build over the next couple of weeks like they better hop to it because uh, our defense isn't going to hold up uh, very, very well, I don't think. In the, in the Do you for guys sure. for sure? Guys and if, the, and if that's the issue? argument, if that's the argument, then I understand that completely. Do but you guys think the also, I want to hold up, hold up, hold up, brother, hold up, brother, hold up, brother. Also, I want to remind you too, like Pollard was terrible in the first couple of games too. I mean, maybe he he had the numbers and stuff like that, kind of. <laughs> but I mean, he, the running game wasn't looking good. Where he started to look really good is when he was catching passes out of the backfield. They were getting him in open spaces. Like, like he started to do a lot better towards the latter half of the season. So I'm just holding out hope that 
maybe things will start to gel with the offensive line. Maybe they'll figure out how to use these running backs, specifically Deuce. Like, Dylan, I know you're, like, a huge Deuce fan. Like, maybe they just haven't figured him out the same way they didn't figure out Pollard last season. They're going to figure him out, and hopefully, like, he'll he'll be an explosive asset to this team. Even Turpin. Turpin started getting involved in the offense towards, like, not too much, but towards the end of the season. You know what I mean? I believe he caught a touchdown or two, you know? So I, I'm just saying, if, if, if there's anything that I'm worried about – like you, to your point, it's a defensive tackles for sure. But um, I'm not, I'm not too crazy worried about the offense just yet because I believe in Dak Prescott, honestly. Yeah, no, that's a good point. He's the great equalizer. You're no doubt there. I would Can I make a point like about D-ball. our wide receivers? Sure. So we were sure. talking in Nick Space the other day. Tell me if this sounds vaguely familiar. Um, our wide receivers couldn't get any separation. Does that sound like Kellen Moore? Yes. That was one yes. of our problems during the, Saints. the Saints game. Our wide receivers could not get any separation. Gee, hmm, sounds like Kellen Moore. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah, like, I, I don't know if that's a did, scheme was thing. Was Kellen Moore calling the plays on, on Sunday? <laughs> what, 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 what happened? Well, I think that I think the entire situation <laughs> got boned on Sunday. I'm throwing that entire game out almost entirely offensively because they're just in a negative script. You can't play the way you want to play. You're pressing. Every play is has to has to be a positive play. You got to score a touchdown on every drive. I'm not taking a ton away from Sunday on the offense, except for maybe our receivers can't block and screw you, Jalen Brooks. But outside of that, um, you know, I'm not taking much away from that one. I think if if they get in a close game here and it's like, wow, we come away from this thing saying, boy, this team really could use a running game or, boy, this team really could use another receiver or whatever it might be, and they lose a close game because of that, that's when I'll be like, all right, yeah, that's that's a problem. I like to see them start using Turpin kind of like Debo, like line him up in the backfield. He's just a, a mismatch, whoever's going to try to cover him especially if he's got a running start. And I'm not saying give him we the ball. We don't do motion like... here, sir. I know. I know. You're absolutely right. Uh, motion? What's that? <laughs> but but I would like to see... Wait, wait. We got some reverses, guys. Because yeah. you got this guy out there, and all we keep hearing is they're going to get him involved in the offense. Well, let's do it already because he he's fast as hell. He's quick. He's kind of what you don't have. And... Uh, you need all the help you could get at wide receiver because right now it's C.D. Lamb and not much else. And as as Cooks, I don't know. I, I don't, you know, it's hard to watch a game and see what he's actually doing. But it just seems to me he's good for a couple of catches, maybe two. But nothing, he's no, it's like. I it's challenge like, you, go go know. look at what he did last year. His If you go to like just Google type in uh Brandon Cook stats and just look at his game log each game last year. Go find me a game where he had more than three receptions. There was only a handful. And it's all because C.D. Lamb, this team was so good last year in such a large way because of what C.D. Lamb did. He had like, what, 130-something receptions. All the targets and catches went to C.D., and then a handful would go to, like, Cooks. But they would make plays when it mattered. Cooks had eight touchdowns. So, like, they would come through and and make valuable plays and valuable moments of the game. Um, But the... The if you're talking quantity, that's going to end up going to C.D. Lamb once he and Dak are you know get their chemistry worked out on the same page in a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, and, Coach and that, did but have... that's the problem though. We have to find ways to get Cook the football. I, I'm, I mean, I mean, he should be getting at least five to six. I mean, five, seven targets, three, four targets is not enough if for CD's, your number two. If C.D.'s not going off, I agree with you. If C.D.'s getting ten catches, I don't really care at that point who else is catching the ball. But if C.D.'s not getting ten catches, whatever for whatever reason, whether it's targets, whether he's not open, whatever it might be, um, then I'm with you. Like we need to figure out how to get not just Cooks, but somebody involved. Well, you, you got to figure out ways to, for him to get catches when they doubling C.D. when they when they roll the co- coverage towards him and, and find ways to get him the football. I mean, he's your next most explosive, best wide receiver that we have. I don't understand why, why on plays we can't find ways to get him involved. And well, you, maybe, you, you, I think the offense not, missed Ferguson last week in that regard. Yeah, yeah, I think so too, Ferguson. But let's face it, the odds of Dak having the same year as last year and CD. Sure. I mean, those were incredible years. Yeah. So yeah. my worry is this offense. What they averaged last year: 32, 33 points a game. Yeah. Something I don't. Like that. I don't think they're going to be as good this year. So that's the only thing that worries me is 
the defense I don't think is going to be as good as last year either. So my thing is they're going to, like you said, they got to get a lead, especially Sunday. If they could get up 7, 10, 13, and just force Lamar to just throw a little more. You know what yes, makes I, me feel I, good, Rob, when you say that, though? That the Cowboys on uh, both sides of the ball aren't going to be as good. Their special teams is going to be really good, so that's fine. But I think there's a lot of teams in the NFL, specifically the NFC, that aren't going to be as good as well. And there's some worse teams from last year that will be better, but not at the level. So I think the, the playing field is going to be level across most of the NFC. Like the Eagles, I, I don't have any faith in the Eagles. I think mean, the 49ers got worse. CMC might be out for the season, I'm hearing, because uh, yep. his, his Achilles is really bad. So, um, I mean, without him, that offense is done skis, I think. Um, so even the Cowboys might not be as good. They might not have to be, which is upsetting because if they were as good and the rest of the NFC is, is worse, well, that would be better, but that might not be the case. I totally, I, I, I totally agree. I think the best thing that happened to the Cowboys is Kellen Moore. He, he's, oh, yeah. he's, he's going to try to turn. You know, Thank you, Kellen. He's our Trojan Earth. horse. <laughs> the, Tom the best thing the Eagles do is run the ball, and he's gonna, he's not going to do it. Oh, uh, I gotta make Proof. a I gotta Photoshop a picture of that of Jerry Jones putting Kellen Moore in a Trojan horse and sending him into Troy, aka Philadelphia. I gotta make a picture of that. That'll be fun. Well, I think Kellen Moore went there because I think he thinks he's going to be the next head coach there. Yeah, you know. Uh, and I um, always say, you know, an offensive coordinator is always auditioning to be a head coach. And how you audition is throwing the ball. Nobody wants to hire a guy that hands the ball off. They always look for the next Sean McVay. And I, that's why I, I loved what happened the other night when they decided to not run the ball after averaging shit six yards a carry. You know what's wild in that regard? The um, uh, What's his face? Mel Kuyper is over here saying they should outlaw. They should ban the too high safety. Well, if you want to be too high safety i mean one of the, the the basic things you can do is just run the ball successfully so you're gonna see offenses beef up and run the ball better over the next couple of years i think and then it's gonna you know be cyclical and go back but um you're gonna see that from ocs a lot more is, is committing to the run game where they haven't really done that in the past i gotta tell you i was impressed with bj well, b john kellen robinson moore, he likes kellen moore air raid <laughs> well he's from boise state where all they do is throw the ball so yeah yeah that's what he did uh, that Bijan Robinson uh, looks awesome. I know we were talking about trying to get him in the draft a couple of years ago. Oh yeah, man, that'd be nice to have somebody like that back there. Yeah. But so so with that play, the Helen's awesome. You know, I know they could have clinched the game, right? But when you have that freaking tush push, it's never unsuccessful. I mean. No. Why would you not just? I don't hate. Do I don't. And you have Saquon running great in their line. Yeah, like in a nutshell, right? Without taking anything else into consideration, I think the play call was fine. But when you're running the ball as well as they have been, you have Saquon who's right. running the ball really well, and you have the tush push. And if you don't get it, they still have to march yeah. down the field, right? Anyways, so. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm I'm running the ball and then doing the touch push if needed. That, Listen, that, as Cowboy fans, we lived through the, the bad of that. Remember when a couple of years ago, yep. Eli Manning? Well, it was probably more than a couple of years ago. Was on like on the four yard line. Well, yeah, they the threw it. The one thing that puzzled me. And then last year, last year with us against the Lions. When we should have ran the ball and we threw it, and then it came back. Oh, we lost if, against uh, uh, who was it last year? Uh, Green we, Bay. Was it Green Bay in the regular season or the year before? Two years ago. Yeah, the year before that, we should have ran against Green Bay. Uh, yeah, right. when we had the lead in overtime. I think it was a couple. A couple. Oh, no, 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 that was was that Jacksonville. Oh, Jacksonville, yeah, but Jacksonville. it was a good. But Green Bay as well. It was the yeah. same case against Green Bay. I remember it was two games that. Yeah, season. both games were like that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah thank God, Kellen Moore. I watched those is. games at the same place, and I swore it off. <laughs> yeah, I just, think, I just think a lot of the times the clock is the enemy. Yeah, of we were in the lead, and we should have run the ball versus throwing it. Thank we you were, again, Kellen Moore. It was like four and a half yards to carry that day too. I remember it was insane. 
Is it a, his, oh. He threw his headset and everything. Isn't it funny <laughs> how we're begging for four and a half yards of carry? <laughs> I mean, that's a good number. Four and a half yards of carry is a fantastic I number. I, I was just looking With... at the uh, the Ravens numbers. I was begging. I was like, please, maybe there's something we're overlooking. Maybe, like, I know we say they're good at running the ball. Maybe uh, maybe they're not as good as we think, but all their numbers check out. Their, their run blocking sucks uh, from a PFF standpoint. But, like, they're still getting, like, four and a half, five yards of carry with Derrick Henry and with Lamar Jackson. Like, they're running pretty good. So we might be in trouble. I'm not yeah. I don't think – I think we'll be all right. I think um, we have a problem. Our real problem is that scheme from um, Shanahan. Well, you know they're going to lock – they're going to lock down CD. So you know that. Maybe. Maybe. Their, their secondary isn't very good. They don't got a guy over there. Lamar Jackson's who I'm concerned about. They ain't got a guy over there can cover CD. Not one guy. They got two guys. You, don't Marlon, uh, you don't think Marlon Humphrey can, can uh, get He cannot. He, he, no, he cannot. He can't. Come on, man. We see him get burned by uh, what the what's they third screener uh wide receiver? I see him getting burned up by him in a in a practice game, man. He can get burned man. up. Diggs, <laughs> Diggs, Diggs, Diggs has been burned. Diggs has been burned by some bad receivers too, man. I'm just I'm just asking the matchup. I'm just asking about the matchup. Mm-hmm. I Diggs, think Diggs, Diggs, Diggs got burned uh, like against no names before. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he got burned by Olave last game too. After saying, after when the reporter said, "Oh, what makes Olave?" Uh, what are you doing, fool? He said, "Yeah, he, he didn't said, get burned." I got well. He didn't get burned. Like that one play where everybody's showing and he's like, "Oh, it was no answer, whatever it was, there, whatever you said." Uh, it was zone coverage, so like it wasn't even his responsibility to cover that. That wasn't that wasn't zone coverage. The in breaking route on the over route on the on the in breaking route, right? Yeah, yeah, that was man, but that was man. That was a hundred percent. That was a hundred percent zone. He was had outside leverage, ten yards off the ball. There was nothing about that was was man. Bro, he they plays, know that he we plays. Do. He plays man coverage. He plays off coverage a lot. He plays bail technique a lot. Yeah, and he gets burned a lot. a lot because of it because he doesn't know how to he doesn't know how to manage his cushion. I'm I'm Just telling like you right now, if you look at the safety, he it was they had three deep zones on that play. The other the other corner on the other side took the man deep. The safety was playing middle deep, and then uh, Diggs had the deep third on his side of the field, and they had linebackers underneath. But the linebacker, I think it was Kendricks, he he sprinted out. He was supposed to have I think the middle of the field, and he he took the wrong angle. I think it was just a good play call because there was just nobody over there. On all the linebackers were they didn't get deep enough underneath. Now, that was a that was a man coverage because uh what's his name? Um Carson was down the field with Shahid and, right. uh, he and was, the safety. He, and, he, and, and playing. he had the deep third though, is what I'm saying. That's why he, he turned and sprinted because Shahid took a he, he ran a vertical route. So he had the deep third covering the deep third on that play. So why was uh D followed uh what trailing him? Diggs, afterwards when the ball if he's when the not ball, play zone because when the ball came out when the ball came out Diggs was like 10 yards off the guy uh, uh over on his side of the field and the ball came out Diggs is the closest guy to him there's just nobody even around him so then Diggs, i mean he's not going to stand still and just watch the play develop at that point when the ball comes out he's got nobody on his side if he knows where the ball is going he's going to go chase after the guy to make the tackle it's just that this is what happens to Diggs a lot and this is why pff kind of is is really good it's a good resource but pff kind of sucks at times because they take the closest defender most of the time when they do their coverage grades that's how they do it they take closest defender regardless of the coverage because you don't know what was actually called so they take closest defender and that's who gets allocated the yards so like in a situation like that like they might allocate those yards to digs but if it was zone coverage that's not his responsibility i'm telling you nobody has coverage nothing about that nothing Nothing about the way that play was set up defensively and the way that the corners played played their guy was speaks man defense to me. That's a hundred percent. If it was zone, then why was nobody around then? You said did, just said your sister you, by the period was around. Did you watch Green Bay I'm last year when they played in zone? Was nobody was around most of the time that game either? Yeah, because <laughs> they're not great at zone. Someone because they're not great at zone. They have man defense most of the time. But uh, like, hey man, if you think it was uh, zone, I mean, that's what you think. I mean. I, I I see men. That's why I see guys covering men. But uh, I mean, all the linebackers, all the linebackers were in zone. The deep safety was in zone. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, it looked to me like he was covering nah, his I third just, of the field. I just went to watch it. I just went to watch it. It's man coverage, bro. Hundred percent. It's hundred percent man coverage, bro. <laughs> it's man coverage, bro. Hundred percent because because Jordan Lewis <laughs> follows the guy who's motioning over. Once the guy goes to the opposite side, Jordan Lewis's man switches. He gets the running back. The the guy who comes, the guy, the other running. I'm sorry, the uh, 
the running back comes out of the, uh, the out of the backfield. The linebacker picks him up, and then the only person who's not covering anybody is Kendrick. all the linebackers are in, are in zone though. Like, look, Bro, go look watch at watch it. Watch right, when I gotta, the running back. I gotta leaves. pull the play up then. Take a look at it. Pull it up. Pull it up. I'm pulling. Watch up right when now. the running back leaves. Watch when the running back leaves. <laughs> He automatically picked up man. Jordan you, Lewis is you on find that on YouTube? Yeah, I, yeah. Had to, I had to look at the highlights. Now the true problem is they were taking advantage of the fact that the matter is we are four. We we got two guys that run four five, and they had two guys that run four three, and basically they are quicker and faster than them, and they they took advantage of that. You know, in those situations, they did the same thing, similar situation with uh Shahi earlier on the same drive. Against Carson, uh, uh, against Carson, you can go back and look at that play. It, it did the same thing. It just, it was just shorter, or shorter uh, depth. I gotta go watch this on the, NFL on, Plus because I don't think there's not a good angle on this, uh, on this replay. And basically, if you remember, he basically Carson basically, you know, grabbed him by the jersey and slung him outside after, uh, after, uh, uh, yeah, on the out, other over yeah, 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 yeah. It's basically the same thing. It was they were running man the whole time. Now they weren't running no zone on that play them plays. They were coming across the field. That's why I was like, Yeah, what I seen, I seen man. Yeah, and you but, want to disguise it. You want to disguise and make it look like it's zone. So you have your corners back <laughs> off or you have your linebackers drop into what looks like a zone, but as soon as that as soon as that running back or wide receiver crosses the line of scrimmage, they're gonna they're gonna bite down on them and get on their hip. But I don't know, man. I only played freaking high school football. I don't know what I'm talking about, you honestly. This is NFL, so it could be different. I only played my senior year, man. So I mean, my senior <laughs> year, year, so I can't really, you know, I just go off what I see, man. You know, I'm not, I'm not a guru. Yeah. But to me, the point, <laughs> the point still stands. Like Diggs plays, I think Diggs plays really well against really good receivers. Like he locks up Scary Terry whenever he comes into town or whenever he goes to Washington. He locks up uh, just Justin Jefferson whenever they go up man to man. He's always doing really, really well against them. But Diggs, for some reason, like the the, the lower tier wide receivers. I don't know whether he like underestimates them or what it is, but like sometimes they get the best of them. That's the only reason why I was asking about Humphrey and CD. Like if because Humphrey's a strong guy, he's been like that for a long time. Like I don't know if he's gonna try to get hands on CD or how how we may feel like he may try to play against uh, Diggs. Yeah, that's true. But I just think that no, Humphrey's sorry, not Diggs, is CD, CD, my bad. But I think the Humphreys is slowed down significantly, and if you put Stevens on him, I just uh, I, I just think you put Stevens on him, it's gonna be it's gonna be a that's what we really want. We would love to see Stevens right in front of him <laughs> all day long. Yeah. But we know if he's over there, he's getting double for sure. If, yeah, he, if he's on him. But, um, which, but yeah, man, I mean. Which, sh- hey, which drive was that on? You remember? It's first the first drive. Right. It's the first drive. Very first drive. I mean, it's, it's disgusting. It was, it's, like a second, <laughs> it's like a second and six. And, like, you can see when the motion goes over, Jordan Lewis is following his man. As soon as Jordan Lewis <laughs> – crosses that threshold, he's like, okay, this is no longer my man. This is my new man. Jordan Lewis picks up a different man. Carsons goes with his man. Diggs, I, I mean, I can't really see. So, again, I could be wrong. And there's several instances where, there's, where they're doing some sort of uh, half of it. Like, I, mean, depend, I, don't know, I don't know which, like, um, hash mark, uh, uh, yeah, hash it was on or whatever. But they could do some instances where they're like, okay, we're doing a cover two over here. We'll man it up over here or whatever. Like, that, that has happened as well. So, I'm not sure. I can't really even see Diggs at the bottom of the screen, but I see everybody else, and it, to me, it looked like man. But I mean, I don't know, man. Regardless, my point was, Diggs has gotten beat by some lower than him caliber type of players before. Hey, so is anybody actually watching this, uh, this awesome game? Thursday I was watching game? it. I was watching it, but as you know me, Irene, Yeah, I, it's, I go in the closet. A, it's a blood fest right now. I go in the closet to talk on these things, so it's I'm 21 in the closet. to That's 3 true. right now. <laughs> yeah, it's really good for my, both of my fantasy leagues, so um, I wish Davion were we'll on here so I could talk spying. smack. Again? Oh, I said it's... No. Sorry. Sorry, Irene. Oh, no, you're good. I was I was just saying I could talk smack to Davion, but he didn't Do you join. Think we'll have anybody spy Lamar? I think, and I think Dylan held oh, the, the same. Oh, yeah. Sentiment. There's nothing like some good old fashioned smash talking. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that I think that if I'm if I'm Zimmer, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm shelving all that. We gotta we gotta um, get Demo into the 
base package, but eventually, because of his ACL, yada, yada, I'm shoving all that, that BS, and I'm putting Demo in the base package. Any package that I have, Demar and Overshone is going to be in it. And Demar and Overshone, to me, is going to be the guy uh-huh. who's either doing delayed blitzes on um, Lamar if uh, he stays in the pocket. Preach. But if, if Lamar goes out, <laughs> if Lamar starts rolling out, Demo, go get him. Like, legit, you got someone who's young, fast, hungry, you know, healthy, like, you, I, I, that, to me, that's going to be the guy on the defense who's going to be a game changer. He's going to be the rah rah guy, that Des Bryant that we need, that Ferguson on offense. Yeah. You know what I mean, like that. That's who he needs to be, like on the field all the time, in my opinion. Exactly. We've had we've had enough of the other experiment. He can stay over on the sidelines. Yeah, and and, and yeah, and that's the thing too. I was talking to Dylan and DJ the other day on a podcast, and man, I I really was rooting for. Um, for um, Clark, Damon Clark. And, uh, yeah, I really liked him out of LSU. I thought he was athletic. He made plays. But, um, like Dylan mentioned, like, you don't want your linebacker to lead the team in tackles, but he's getting tackles, assisted tackles, or tackles seven yards down the field. You want a guy who's going to be beating people at the line of scrimmage, going to get tackles for losses, going to be making plays, interceptions, forced fumbles. That's just not him. So it's like, dude, you're great. I mean, I'm sorry, (laughs) you're good. Uh, you're an asset on this team, but we got to get some playmakers in here. So to me, shelve Demo. Uh, I'm sorry, shelve uh, Clark. Get Demar and Overshone in there. Leo Fowl, you'll you'll probably be good one day. Hopefully, you can grow up to be just like Kendricks. But right now, I want Kendricks on there, and I want Demo in there. Yeah. Hey, yeah, real quick. I'm, I, I'm I, with you right there. I wish I could share my screen because I have the all 22 up. So, because <laughs> I got I got to talk about this because it's gonna bother me. So uh, Hooker chases Taysom Hill inside, <clears throat> right off the motion. He ends up not taking him because it's not his, it's not man, it's zone. So he ends up taking the running back out in the flat on the right. The uh, linebacker on the defense is right, ends up taking the tight end out into the flat to the left. Middle linebacker drops into a shallow zone. I don't know if he's supposed to have a deeper zone or what, but both corners are playing outside leverage, uh, outside technique, I mean. So when you're playing man, you want to play inside technique because you have the sideline to your advantage, right? You want to funnel everything inside if you're in zone coverage to the safety. So everything about this, it it screams zone to me, bro, or bros, because I know both of you saw. Both of you saw man. If you don't have the all 22, it's really hard to see what's exactly going on. But I'm telling you with all my heart, I mean, if I had to bet my house on it, I would bet that this was zone coverage, 100%. It is It is hard to see, and exactly what you described to me sounds like a t- sounds like a cover two man under. But <clears throat> if it's a cover three or whatever, did, did one of the safeties move to the middle of the field? Yeah, that's where the safety okay, was, was in the probably, middle of the field. Then it's probably, then, yeah, okay, then it's probably cover three. The only then deep the, guy – Then I'm probably wrong. The only deep guy was the guy that Carson was covering, so the safety ends up cheating over that way. Uh, but it was just a shitty design play, I think, on the defensive side. And I think – I want to say Kendrick's fucked up because his uh, zone was super shallow. That's my guess. Uh, but I don't know. I, I don't really know. It was just a shitty-looking play all the way around. Okay. Anyways. Sorry. <laughs> maybe it was a quarters. Maybe it was a quarters. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess it could be a quarters. It could be a, a cover four. Yeah, it could be a cover four, and then the. I think it was a three. You, who, who, I think it was. Who a did three. you say it was? Hooker. It was Hooker deep. Oh, no, not Hooker deep. It was the other. It was Wilson deep, and then the two sa- the two corners had a deep third. It looked like, and Carson runs down the field with his guy because you know he's th- running a vertical down the field. Mm. I don't think there's any way for us to know for sure, but literally every yeah, single yeah, thing okay. that you check mark for for zone is what it looked like to me. Yeah, not that important, was. bro. I mean, but I don't know. No, it I, is, I'm gonna stick with the details. Like, I'm like that. Too. <laughs> I'm like that too, man. So it is important. It's not a big deal, bro. I feel right, like it's like not that. a big deal. It, like you said, it ain't a big deal. It's just I thought of my scene with me, but if it wasn't, shit, I don't but know that's what the hell. Right. That's the difference between not only not only between us who are watching on TV and Dylan, who's got the 22, but also between us, who's just talking in a space and the guys who are like actually there in the play call. You know what I mean, because there's a lot of times like that got blamed for some interceptions last season and he got, you know, and in my opinion, I was like, dude, to me, it looked like, you know, not, I'm sorry, maybe not last season, but the season before to me, I was like, man, it looks like Schultz should have cut that 
Um, not not as deep. It's like he should have went a little more shallow with that, and CD should have cut it deeper or whatever. We really don't know. We can only speculate, you know what I mean? But definitely helps having the All-22. Mm-hmm. All-22 is a game changer, man. Did uh, <laughs> I had my browser down this whole time, so I was watching All-22. I didn't even realize that Rob left. It's, it's a great thing and it's a bad thing because you can see some shit that you don't really want to see. Well, right. That play pisses me off because I'm like, what the hell was the point in running that play? I mean, you got to run 20 yards downfield and turn in, and there's not a defender in sight. So, what was what's the point in playing defense? Well, it's not worse than watching Jordan Phillips play football. That's just or some or just be out there on the field, basically. That shit is disgusting to watch. He ain't gonna be on the field for at least four weeks. <laughs> yeah. Man, well, you know. I was so angry watching this dude, bro. I was like, what is he doing? Is he just walking down the line or something? I mean, I'm – are you going to engage in any kind of, in any kind of way? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird to see a big man like that just get pushed around like he's nothing. Like he's nothing. Like like he's a paper towel getting pushed down, the, not even by, by somebody, by the wind. Like the wind blowing – and he's just falling over and tumbling. And you know what I'm saying? He's a wild west tumbleweed just going across the screen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? It's just like, wow. I thought you were going to help us. Yeah. Now, when the wrong? Giants traded to a division rival and he's the third guy in their depth chart, you know it ain't going to be good news. So, I don't know. I don't know why we were surprised by that. It's only one week. So, may- hey, maybe he's really good and just had a bad a bad uh, six reps. <laughs> they saw us coming and said, sucker. Yeah. I, what did we give up for him? I don't even know. It was like a seventh rounder? Like 20, 20 25, seven round, six round pick, something like that. Yeah. Could have been Justin. Is he the one who, like – it's if we if he's not active for more than like two or three games, we get we don't have to give up the pick. But I guess he was active for two. I'm not sure what the details on the trade where it really yeah, wasn't that like important was to me. Something. I didn't have a lot of confidence now. I didn't have a lot of confidence in Limbaugh Joseph either. I said this in Nix's space the other day. I was like, when you got two DTs, you're counting on that combine their age and they're almost close to Jerry Jones's age. Like they're not going to be very helpful in this. And and Phillips is actually younger than I thought he was. He's only 31, but. Man, he's got some. He's got some city miles on him because there's not a lot left in that tank. Man, at least I've seen. I've seen actual knowing what the hell you're doing compared to the Phillips. He just. <laughs> he just. Linval's just slow. <laughs> like Linval, Linval has, in his heyday, he was good, but he's just old and slow. He's just old. He's I, old now, man. He's what just kills old. me though and is then, I would have expected more in that game and early in the season, right? I, I'm a, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of that from Linval, where it's just kind of slow to react. I would have expected that later in the season when he wears down. It's a little disappointing that um, it's it's that way off the rip. Oh, hey, Rick, you got, I see you got your hand up, brother. You got something? Yeah. A um, couple of things. One, uh, it was uh, I think it was last week. I think it was uh, Adam Schefter or um, t- it was um, Todd Archer. I think he said that the um, once he played two games, all right, uh, Phillips played two games. The uh, trap picks have uh, completed, so okay. the, uh, the Jets uh, or the Giants get the sixth, and we get a seventh. And 2020 or 25 or something like that. Rick coming in with the jeans. So, Love it, bro. Right. No, I follow, you know, because I'm in a lot of different things. I'm also with the, um, you know, One Star Cowboys podcast with uh, John Mashoda and Saad. And Joe, um, yeah. I know I'm, not, I'm in their Discord and we talk, you know, we talk a lot of stuff up in there and do predictions and rumors and all kinds of other things. And somebody posted from uh, Nick Harris that, um, or not Nick Harris, it was uh, Clarence. So um, he uh, he talked to uh, Overshown. He talked to Overshown and asked him about the, are you going to be playing more? And he goes, yeah, expect me to be playing more next game. He said that to Deuce? Or do said that? Yeah. All right, excellent. No, um, yeah, Overshown said that to Clarence Hill. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm watching the. 
was watching Aaron Rodgers get clobbered here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Well, that's good to know because that was a big problem last week. Massive. He, I mean, Overshone, he's, if he's not in base, then fix your base. Figure out how to get him in base because that's just absurd to be that you would put Clark in your base over Overshone because I don't think there's a single thing from, from smarts to physicality to speed that Clark does better than Overshone. So I don't get that one. Yeah, it's, uh, all I can say is, you know, like I said, I'm involved in a lot of different, I've been doing that for years. I um, listen to all the Dallas Cowboy podcasts, I listen to Blog and the Boys podcast, I listen to, you know, Vox now this year, I'm with the DLLS, uh, with Jeff Cavanaugh and them, and Clarence Hill. You're in it, man. I li- I'm in everywhere. You're in it up to you. I get yes. a different... <laughs> So, so, you know, just like my you know, Cowboys uh, podcast I listen to, it's like somewhere anywhere from 9 to 12 a day. So I need y'all to root for this for me. I need a Jacoby Brissett interception before the end of this game, and I need a Joey Sly field goal. And I win a little bit of money. <laughs> for your team? No, no, I'm for my bets. <laughs> Do some gambling on the side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is a uh, way random, <laughs> but uh, and I know I always say some something like this every single time we get on one of these, and I apologize. But um, I talk a lot. I know I do. So if I start ranting and rambling, and I'm not giving somebody else a chance, y'all just just cut me off, and I'll realize like, oh crap, I've been talking for a long time. So I don't ever want to be that guy who's like talking so much that other people can't get their opinions out because it, I can. Because I could just sit in the closet and talk to myself if that, if that was the case. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I appreciate no, all I with me. didn't have that thought once tonight. So, you're good. You're good. Oh, is that? Yeah, you're good, Michael man. From, you're very good. From Colton, sure, California, man. I believe, is with us. Wait, let me let me do. What's up, Cowboys Nation? <laughs> Shout out to all the callers <laughs> in the Cowboys Nation. Hey, and God bless. And <laughs> Love Cowboys. It. Love it. <laughs> we Love it. Michael, we need to know what time you call into the show because we we suspect it's 10, 15 a.m., uh, possibly give, the day before. Don't give the information, baby. Don't give it. Hold that to yourself. <laughs> hey, that, that's top secret information, but I'll tell you this. I call West Coast time. <laughs> How's everybody doing? What's going on, bro? Hey, yeah, are, are, well. you know what? I'm, I'm watching this, uh, this Jets-Patriots game. And and uh, it just man, it, it. I wish we would have took that dude, Breland Allen. <laughs> if you watch how this, the the Jets, you know, I don't think too many people really could have uh, expected them to do too much this year. But with that two headed running game right there, they're, they're going to be hard to stop. And the running game travels, and not only that, but in the playoffs. Man, if, if you can't stop that run, man, the, the Jets are going to be dangerous. And I that's laugh, crazy bro. That's the third time I think we've heard Jets. his name tonight. So we all wanted Braylon, Braylon Allen. I think we all wanted him during the draft, and now we all want him even more. Yeah. I see more people now. Hey, you, you, you I'm, know. I'm just, I'm disgusted. Just disgusted. You know, yeah, yeah. what would be awesome to see is, is even if, uh, if uh, I mean, I doubt it will happen, but if uh, Jerry Jones went after um, – um, the running back um, in uh, Miami, he's he's still on his rookie deal, man, because they they just got Jalen Wright, you know. So they're and Roheem Mostert, so they're stacked at running back. Oh, Devin A Chain, man, that'll be oh A Chain, yeah. I, I don't think amazing. they'll part ways with A Chain. Yeah, they, they, they ain't doing it. They ain't doing it. They missed him anyway. They're not giving that. They should have went after Connor of Arizona last year. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they could. They could have got or J.K. Hep- Dobbins in uh, free agency. That's unfortunate. I got to so tell you, Aaron let me Rodgers, ask you this. he still looks great. Let me ask you this, because the Jets have the two-headed monster, but they also have a Banaconda. That would be yes, more realistic. Yes. Like, what? Yes. That, That's a that was the I guy that happen. I thought you could actually trade for. Yeah. Right. Hey Rob, I, I I love I love your uh, your conversation you had on air today, man. That was awesome. Hey, I stand with you on that. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. I mean, I I love Nick, and and I understand, you know, but I I just don't go for that. That you know, I don't want any more. Wow, we did a good job, and I, no, no, we're better than that. Here's, but save here's, that for Carolina. Here's the only and the yes, bad. For Carolina. Here's the only thing I'll say specific to this week, Rob, is that this is a 
obviously all the games are important. Some games are more important than others. This is an AFC team. Um, I don't know how many common opponents they have with our, our direct competitors. But if there's ever a week where a moral victory could be possible, I think this is potentially the week for that. Not that I want that to happen. But. No, I, I know what you're saying because of the AFC, but I, I'm tired of moral victories. I want this team to actually live up to what we think they could be. And I think you're at home. Go do it. This team is 0-2. The Raiders just beat them. You could beat them. Go do it. Yeah. I guess. I think. I, guess, see, I think again, my I wanna, my point ahead, was sort of. Oops, sorry. I, I, I just. I just. One thing I want to know. What do y'all think this team is right now? Yeah, I think that we we match up well against the 49ers. I no, do. No, I, I, well, no. you know what? Well, maybe the Let 49ers me take that with all their injuries. We match up good against Detroit. No. I mean, any, any team, team that can, we the best team, team in Texas. I, right feel now. Like, I feel like personnel-wise, we could match up against San Francisco in their current state, but that scheme is what's going to kill us with that yeah. team specifically. The scheme kills us. And the Lions they, they a, put a, a running back that scheme. hasn't played, and he looks great. I don't think we're as talented as them, especially on the offensive side of the ball. We don't have a real number two. And they have five guys that they can use on their offense. I mean, they can use a fullback. Well, I think, <laughs> That's pretty I good think it's the best. Well, I was just saying, you know, I just think we we, we outmatched when we come to play any, playing somebody like that. Not, not only do they got the team, they got the players to match with the scheme. So we getting my butt whooped regardless because we don't match up player-wise and scheme-wise because we get better. The only team I think we match up with and I, it, is the Lions because even though the Lions run the ball, golf doesn't scare me. And the Cowboys have beaten the Lions the last few years. So exactly. I think we're good about that. But the play calling of San Francisco – is just great, and mm-hmm. and the it's, what he does to scheme his guys open, and his running game is just incredible, and that's what they have a hard time with. No matter who they put at running back, um, if you if what's his name is going to be out six weeks, eight weeks, watch how good this this backup is going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Irene, what were you going to say? I know you had something. Oh, it's actually kind of piggybacking off of that, the, the moral victory thing. So cause I think my comment probably fell into a little of that, but it wasn't about like, oh, yeah, rah, rah, moral victory. It was more like I want to be able to say that this team can compete because what I saw on Sunday was the same team that showed up in Green Bay last year. And I'm like, well, I'm already fast forwarding that this is not going to be a good season, even if we, you know, go 10 and 7 or 11 and 5 we got the same product, right? So if I see them compete to where, because I think Baltimore's better than an 0-2 team, then no, it's not like, oh, a moral victory, yeah. But I want to be able to see that we're competitive and that, hey, okay, if we tweak some things early on or throughout the year, then by the time playoffs show up, maybe we actually can win it. That's what it is. It's not It's not moral victory, rah, rah. Yeah. It's just, and hey, I, prove to me that we're not – the exact same team as last year. Prove to me we have something. Yeah, and I agree with Irene in that sense. And it's like I said earlier, for the people who were in here, sorry that I'm going to say it again, for the people who weren't, um, I basically said that if it doesn't matter how you win or how you lose, then don't watch the game. Don't watch the game. Wait till the newspaper gets thrown on your doorstep and then look, and then you can see if we won or lost. Because it does matter how you win and it does matter how you lose. And if Dallas Cowboys go out there and they lack effort and they're getting blown off the ball and they're they're doing the same things that they did against Green Bay and against the Saints, that matters a lot. But if they go out there, they hold Lamar to 30, 40 rushing yards, they hold Henry under 80, and they're fought they fought really hard and they're hard contested game and they lose 31 to 29 to me i'm gonna be like dude that's progression at least we're progressing at least zim did something he made some type of change there's an adjustment there was something that happened that made dallas play better this this week now of course it's going to be a loss and i'm not celebrating of the uh a loss but i am saying the trajectory is there and i'm just happy to see that yeah here's how i look at it like you're saying david like last season we go out to Arizona, we get clapped. 
We go to San Francisco, we get clapped, and it's like, man, these losses are terrible. Then we go up to Philly. We shoot ourselves in the foot, but that's a tight game. We lose that game, but it's like, nah, we're we're better than what we just showed. We had the questions in Arizona, like, are we really that bad? We had the questions in San Francisco, embarrassing. But we go up to Philly, and then we start winning some meaningful games. We we beat the uh, Eagles again when we see them. We beat the Lions. Guys, we beat guys, the Seahawks, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, man, this is some, like, crazy feedback. Are y'all hearing that, or is it just me? God, not really. I was hearing no. it earlier. I was hearing it, no I, uh, I agree, but I disagree. We always beat the Eagles at least one game. We match up very good with the Eagles. Uh, for some reason, we beat the Lions. You know, last year was a crazy game. We beat the Lions. But we weren't, we weren't a, a, a great defense last year. Uh, we were just great against some bad teams. We just destroyed last year. But we started to see towards the later part of the year when teams started to be more physical with us. We knew, we started to see it. Maybe we didn't want to admit it, but we started to see the issues we were having. And then obviously the Green Bay game was just an ass beat. And and the set and what bothers me is we just seen it. We just seen it a couple of days ago. The same thing, like Irene said. I it, I thought I was watching Green Bay all over again. It looks exactly mm-hmm. like that. And oh yeah, we all felt that. Me, that's why to me, you got to go out and beat the Ravens to get that taste out of your mouth. To show, forget about showing me or you or who, show yourselves that that ain't who you are. Because until you do that, that's who you are. And if you lose to the Ravens, uh. There's no, I don't think there's a moral victory because at the end of the day, they were going to say, you can't beat good teams. You just cannot beat them. Yeah. You're going to come back Thursday. You'll beat the Giants. And then, then you're going to have that tough stretch, San Francisco, Detroit, uh, Philly. No. You're at home, and that's the key. If you were in Baltimore, then I would say, well, I don't expect them to win. I expect them to win Sunday. I expect them to win at home, I expect them to be pissed off. I expect them to do some different things on offense, and that's and then, and then we will all say, okay, okay, we're okay. We lost, we lost to the same. Maybe that was an aberration. Maybe that ain't how it's going to be. And I just think that's why this game's important. <clears throat> Paper, not as much because of what Dylan said. But mindset, this is a huge game for them. Yeah, and I, and I agree, and I there's definitely lot, understand where you're coming from. There is a lot of background from. noise. I'm sorry, but there's a lot yeah. of background noise. Hey, right, let me do this. Me, I'm going to put everybody on mute, <clears throat> and then I think we're going to have to go to hands, maybe. Uh, hand raising. So let me do that. Um, everybody take your hands down for a sec. <laughs> Undo your hands. So, David, I know you got a response, so I'll let you go here in a second first. Uh, mute space. Unmute space. Okay, David, go ahead. Hi, uh, David from Fort Worth. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I agree. I agree with you, Rob. Like, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from, for sure. Um, I guess my only thing is, like, the win, to me, doesn't mean – I mean, it means something, but it doesn't mean everything to me. Because if Dak goes out and scores 42 points and Lamar scores 38 points and the defense gave up 205 rushing yards – I don't feel better about my team than I did the week before just because they beat. Well, you'll feel better about the offense for sure. Yeah, but, but yeah, because that means feel, they fix their. See, they, a, yeah, you, you're right. You won't feel good about the defense, but you'll feel good about the offense. You know, if you. So that's what I'm saying. If you lo- flip it, if you lose, I don't know, 27 24, you're not going to good about anything you're going to say the offense can't score 30 and the defense gave up another 27 that's why to me i want to see them you know i my prediction for the score is like a 30 23 type win for dallas i think they like dylan said they need to score quick not quick they need to score first they need to get confidence get the lead and i i just like i said i just think being at home this you have to win this game Hey, I saw um, Chris's hand uh, was up. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, 
How we doing, guys? Hey, Chris. <laughs> no, hey, no. Jason um, Garrett. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, yeah, this looks like a good bunch of players, the right group here. No, um, what I was going to say is I think one thing with the with the showing up and winning or losing or whatever, showing up at least could take a little fear out of us, you know, like this isn't going to snowball on us. Like when you say you know, us, like, is that the players or the fans? Uh, I think, I think it's the, I think it's the fans. I think, well, I'm speaking for myself. I can't speak for y'all, but, uh, no, I'm, I'm thinking, you. I'm thinking, this isn't going to be like the Wade Phillips last season where they just started throwing in the towel, you know? So you got that little fear, you know, in the back of your, in the back of your mind that it's like, okay, especially out, off of a loss like that. It's like, we got to show up next game. Winning would be really cool, but let's just not let that happen again. Because that happens a couple of times, and it's like, like I said, you remember the Wade Phillip years, whenever, you know, Jason took over, everyone just had given up. The players, yes, that, that, that might have something to do with it, too. But as fans, someone who's been a fan for a long time, I can sniff that out, and it's like, ooh, let's not let that happen again. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a big deal for the players too, but yeah, I mean, it's well, yeah, hard to yeah, that's a it, right. Yeah, well, that's a fan's perspective on. I don't know what's going through a player's head whenever they're in. You know, they start the give up mode. Sure, and, but, and I um, appreciate that, Chris, because a lot of people talk about um, intangibles, and to a, you know, you look at the film and it looks a certain way, and it. May be that way. You talk about effort and will and all that stuff, and maybe it's there. Maybe they just sucked. Maybe they just got outplayed, out schemed. Um, and when you talk about the things that you can't really like identify or like point at and quantify, it's tough to put something. So I appreciate that approach that you're taking. Is hey, yeah, it's from a fan's perspective because you don't know really about the players. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like let's not let's not let this get away from us. Let's remember we can still play with anyone. Like, you know, don't let don't let. A New Orleans, don't let someone come in here and just like smack you around, you know, kick your dog on the way out and don't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. So, um, anyway, it's my two pennies. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's a good point. It's a good statement. So, I think it was Florida Sunshine and then Zach. And in Florida Sunshine, if you don't mind, can you share your name? But you don't, you don't have to, but. Oh, sure. It's Paula. Interesting fact, Paula oh. lived uh, about 45 minutes north of me some years ago. I found out the other day I on Nix's, uh, yep. Nix's show. So, yeah. Yeah, used to live in Sarasota. Yep, yep. All right, what you got? I got out of that state. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just... Um, I think that both teams are going to come in, I think... One, you've got the Ravens that are 0-2, and they just lost to the Raiders. So they're going to come in scorched earth. You've got us that lost to New Orleans Saints. We're going to come in scorched earth. They asked me to talk. So I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be a really tough game. But I think hopefully our defense is pissed off enough after their poor showing last week that we will end up being the. I'm, I'm hoping we will end up be the, uh, being on the other end of it at this point. Yeah. But I think both teams will come in scorched earth at this point. It would be amazing if this was like a 45. I don't even know the math when you get that high, but like 45, like 38 game. I would love that. I would hate it for our defense, but I would love it just from an entertainment standpoint. <laughs> It'd be great if it was the Steeler game from 2016. You remember the rookie – uh, Zeke's rookie year, Dak's rookie That's year. That was one. Game. Someone called in the other day and said they'd never seen a screen go for so long, and I was like, Zeke, Zeke did it. <laughs> so Nick, Nick yeah. said something today that didn't make any sense. He said something like, "That was the first ass kicking the Cowboys had at home in like four years." I think he meant regular like, season, regular season. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm like, assuming. Uh, what do you? 
I thought yeah, the I'm same just... thing. I'm like, yeah, man, his that, PTSD too. involves uh, <laughs> repression. <laughs> right. But that, that. That's a killer game. <laughs> Out of all the games, I, I denial. And that was one of my favorites. Um, Zach, Zach, and then David. Yo, so uh, I'm going to have to dip out in a second, but uh, one storyline I'm looking for in this game is uh, Tyler Linderbaum and Derrick Henry. If you recall a few years ago, uh, I believe it was the Mozzie draft. There was talk about uh, maybe the Cowboys were looking at uh, Tyler Linderbaum getting a new center. Um, I think he got drafted right before we could pick him up, but uh, obviously uh, we did not get him. And then Derrick Henry, he was floating in free agency. Apparently, we never hit up his phone or his agent. Um, I didn't think that was realistic that he would come anyways. But um, you couple that with just the the crap that we got on the defensive tackle spot right now. Uh, if they feast on us, Linderbaum and, um, you know, Lamar and Derrick Henry, uh, that's just going to be another kick in the gut. Um, so... It's, it's time to play football. Um, you know, we got to show up. And, and, and to, you know, continue this conversation, I want to win. I'm tired of shrugging my shoulders after, you know, quote, unquote, big games and just being like, well, maybe not. No, nah, Rob, I'm with you. I, uh, they should win. They, we've had the talent on paper for generations. I'm 31. All anybody has talked about in my fandom is the most talented team, Dallas Cowboys. And like, there's nothing to show for it. I, I want to show up for these big games, you know? Um, and so we should win. I'm hopeful we'll win. But um, I mean, yeah, if, if we keep bleeding in our run D, it's going to, you know, look, look and feel bad that Linderbaum and Derrick Henry, uh, who maybe in another world could have been on our roster, are uh, the ones holding us at the throat. So the only thing I'll say about we'll Derrick see. Henry is like when you watch the film, <clears throat> it does look like he's he's slowing down. And it's always kind of been the case for him that like he needs a hole, he needs a lane, and once he hits the hole, like it's a freight train. <clears throat> and it's never been more evident now because a lot of guys are meeting him at the line and tackling him. Um, but he's still a big boy, he still plows forward, whatever. I just don't know with this offensive line and this running scheme if uh, Derrick Henry would have been successful here. I don't know what running back would be. I'm sure there's somebody out there that could figure it out. But um, personally, I didn't want Derrick Henry just because he's getting up there in age, and I just didn't think he fit our scheme very well. But somebody like uh, um, I really wanted was J.K. Dobbins. And I know he had a lot of injury concerns, but I'm like, he's going to be super cheap. Like, get him in here. What else do you have? You don't really have much going on here in the running back room. And now you're seeing him out there with the Chargers kind of going off. So that's an unfortunate miss as well. He kind of reminds me of uh, – remember Jacobs on the Giants a few years ago? Derrick Henry? Yeah. The yeah big, Jacobs you know, became when, a little oh, yeah. uh, B-word after a couple of years, though. He was a big boy <laughs> that hated remember, contact. Remember Jacobs, he looked he – looked he never hurt us because he wasn't quick enough. And I think the same thing with this game. I'm not so much worried about Henry. It's it's the RPO with Lamar. That, it's the uh, – as much as the DT suck here, it's the outside runs that gash us con- consistently yeah. uh, against the Saints. And, so, and anybody's going to do that, it'll be him. So uh, that's that's I know. I'm not worried about. He's going to get his if it's third and two. Or so, he's, he's probably going to get it, but <laughs> I don't think he's going to be ripping off big runs. Lamar's the guy that I'm worried you know about. I want to see. I'm going to let David talk in just a second, but I just got to throw this out there. I want to see. Uh, <clears throat> I want to see Overshone and Derrick Henry one on one in the hole meeting head to head on a third and two and see who wins that fight. It's going to be Derrick Henry just because he's a large human being. It's gonna be, <laughs> I still want to see it. It's going to be Derrick Henry. I, I, I'm more concerned with the, what is that, what's the running back from uh coastal? I think it was from coastal Carolina. Uh, he's a, he was an undrafted guy, but a speed guy. I'm more, not, more I, I, I can't think, no, I'm not just as here. Uh, it was another kid. I, I know he got injured. I don't know if he's playing right now. If he was, oh, Keaton that's Mitchell. the guy I would more. Yeah, Keaton Mitchell. He's That'd on be the one that would, I think we're good. He's on, oh, okay. Okay. I'd be more worried about Justice Hill than, yeah, than uh, what's, we were getting kicked, we getting gashed on sweeps. It's the fast more than we were getting gashed about, couple. which is why Lamar's yeah. a concern, I think, obviously. Um, yeah. David, what's up, my dude? I saw your hand go up. 
Yeah. Um, can you guys hear me all right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I had to dip out and come back in, man. I've, my, my audio started These weird, spaces but, uh, are whack like that. I don't know what the problem is here. but Yeah. I kind of caught the tail end of the running back conversation that y'all were just having. And uh, to me, as far as scheme, like you were mentioning, Dylan, it kind of reminds me how, like, DeMarco – uh murray had like an awesome season with us and then he went to the eagles and like anybody who understood was like dude he's not gonna have the same season right. there eagles run they run left and right a lot they're not gonna just you know they don't have offensive line like we did at the time so i kind of see um your point like derrick henry coming here would be cool because we got an awesome name but um i don't know if he would have really uh been able to do any damage um like he had in the past but anyways um no, I did want to say one thing because I'm about to hop off, man. My baby woke up, so I'm going to go try to help Yeah, him we're going to call this soon anyway, so you're good. Cool. I was uh, Dylan, you've already heard this, so I apologize <laughs> if you're going to hear it again. But I take my I'm super excited. Oh, no, you're good, man. As far as uh, storylines, right, quote-unquote storylines for this game, I'm excited to see Dak and Lamar go at it. You know, Lamar being MVP, Dak, people feel like he was snubbed. He should have gotten it. So I want to see what kind of dog, what kind of fire Dak comes with. You know, sort of like, you know, you got the title that I was supposed to have. I want to see what he brings. And on top of that, a small little storyline that I just thought about since our last conversation, Dylan, was you got, you know, possibly the GOAT kicker, right, and Tucker, who's starting to struggle a little bit and starting to decline. And we got ourselves a little baby GOAT in Aubrey. So that's going to be a cool little uh, cool little kicking challenge to watch too so those are my two things man i appreciate everybody uh listening to me putting up with me and my ranting and my passion and uh, i'm gonna let you guys go i appreciate you dylan and irene for hosting this all right bro good stuff catch have you have a good night thanks for coming yes, on yes sir, have yes, sir. Have yes, sir. Good later man anybody else have any predictions they want to throw out there i think we got all I the hands covered chris, from who was up. chris and uh paula i think both put their hands up <laughs> no i'm good oh Hands were oh, left over from oh, last time, I think. Okay. Oh, prediction! Yikes! Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to do a prediction after watching that last game because I'm not sure where where to go with that. But I think they answer. I think they come back, and I think the Cowboys actually pull this one out. Um, and that's and after watching that last game, it's not easy for me to say, but uh, uh, yeah, give it give give it to the boys. 27 to 21. If the Cowboys get blown out again, will you pick them to win again anytime soon? Never. That, that, that'll that go to my earlier not, statement. Not even against I the Giants. About, about, about we'll, we'll start talking about uh, who's a good young coach we can bring in here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll pick them Thursday for sure. I'll say if they lose against the Giants next week, then I'll start talking about coaches. Yeah, I thought I said before the season started to Nick, I was like, the only reason, only way Mike McCarthy leaves is this season absolutely goes off the rails. And uh, boy, if they lose this one big and then lose against the Giants, it's officially off the rails. Throw on the towel, see who's ready to go for next year. <laughs> but they don't look for Chips. Zimmer to be taken over the head coaching job or Al Harris. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, Al Harris. Zimmer probably would because he had. Co- it, listen, this team should not be there. You got a top five quarterback, top three wide receiver, top two or three defensive player. This team's too good. Yes, we need to tweak the defensive line. Maybe it'll never be good this year. Uh, offensive line technically should get better every game. This team has too much talent to to miss the playoffs, especially what Dylan said. I don't think Philadelphia is as good. Forget about the Giants and Washington. I don't think anybody in the NFC is as good right now as they were last year. It's a long season. And I just think uh, my my prediction already I gave was 30-23 Dallas at home. Turn it around. And um, if, they lose, if they lose this game big, uh, yes, Mike McCarthy will be officially on the hot seat. Yes, sir. I agree. Hey, Rob, I, 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 uh, I think there's one guy that that uh, might be able to help us out on that defensive line. Uh, oh, about God. Uh, here. <laughs> Is who? Who? <laughs> uh, Rogers from Auburn, the the rookie they took. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he he couldn't hurt. 
hey, he could have at this that. point, why not? If they're playing so horrible, why not go with the youngster and see what he turns out to be? It's, it's better than a- my my prediction is if if uh, Linville Joseph has another bad game, he gets cut after this game. Michael, you should totally and call I, in tomorrow and say yeah. say that. You and say, hey, I wonder if he's still out there. If he's a, if, do you know of any like rookie seventh round defensive lineman that might be like free agent from the practice <laughs> squad somewhere? Hey, Nick, Nick might have a meltdown. Uh, Nick might have a public meltdown. I think he would die know. laughing. I think he would enjoy but, that. But, you know, we should coordinate that. Nick's like, a wise have ass. Five people call in about that. Oh, uh, like, okay. like when you get a substitute well, teacher, I, I, you all we, drop your pencils at the same time. Does so everybody talk about the same who thing? Who was hey, just I, I thought, hey, Nick, I, I'm asking for a friend. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Irene wanted me to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He'll never, he'll never think anything bad to Irene. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes me and Nick have a love hate relationship, which is great. Hey, uh, I, I want to ask one question in, in all seriousness. Uh, um, do you think it, it, it would sound stupid to, to um, play Micah Parsons at middle linebacker as a spy against Lamar no, Jackson? This week? That's a great idea. Why didn't they put him at linebacker last week when he was getting schemed out of the uh, plays all game uh, at edge? I, I mean, honestly, man, I, he, I, I'm a big college fan, and I think that he's a great linebacker. I, I wish we could see him there a lot more. I, I, and even uh, uh, I remember, uh, I think it was his second game of his career. It, it was uh, against the Vikings. I think I could be wrong. But, man, he had a good game. I think he had like 10 tackles, but he was all over the field. He's a heat-seeking missile. He can cover. But here's the, here's the problem with that. Uh-huh. If he's not rushing the quarterback, Lamar will have all day to throw. So yeah, that's 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 the that's the reason why yeah. they don't. That's why they brought Kendricks in. That's They're a fair point. Kendrick, yeah, why not have Overshawn do it? Well, I think if anybody, if they're going to have a so-called spy, Overshawn is the guy that would do it. I think. I, I think Overshawn such a luxury because you can now you can afford to play Micah at edge more than maybe you should. Uh, if you didn't have a fast, speedy linebacker like that, I think they just have to get Overshawn on the field. And obviously, this is his, his first real season. You know, I shirted last year because injury. Um, so there's going to be some growing pains. But, like, get that man on the field. Get him learning. And I think you're going to have a luxury with not having to worry about moving Micah around off the line of scrimmage as much. Even though you probably should more often to preserve him for the end of the season. But, he should definitely yeah. be out there over Clark. Clark, man, I just... Oh, yeah. I'm just, Can we I'm go just, find out where Vanilla? <laughs> I I even like Lua. Can what, we go Lua find out better. where Vanilla Gorilla is? Man, man, Clark. Vanilla Gorilla. He did so much. <laughs> Clark did yeah, so what, much stuff last yeah, week. That's, that's, the, guy, that's the guy I was talking about. What's that guy's name? The guy, the guy that got cut. John Ridgeway. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> did anybody pick him up? He's still with the uh, commanders, as far as I know. No, I thought he got. I thought he got cut. I think he got cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's a and young guy. That's the guy they need to bring in. Something like that. Gorilla. <laughs> the vanilla gorilla. He's. Uh, there we go. You know who he's with? He's with the New Orleans <clears throat> Saints. He's oh, on he the didn't Saints. play that. No, he might have been inactive. He doesn't have any stats this year. But yeah, well, he's if he's on the practice squad, maybe that's somebody they should go grab because at least he's young. Let these old see. men they're bringing off the couch ain't working. He might be on the 53 but was just inactive. But let me – I'm trying to find out if he's on practice squad or not. Um, But, yeah, they need – what they need is um, – somebody called in the other day and said it. They, they don't need bigger guys. They need stronger guys. And um, that's true to an extent. You obviously need the size to be able to keep up because you will wear down if you don't have that size. Um, but they need high-motor guys and guys that give a shit in the yeah. middle, right? You can't have Linval Joseph <laughs> playing patty one. cake. You, you can't have Phillips rolling around on the ground five, six, seven yards off the ball. You gotta have guys that like want to be physical and want to play in the middle. Are, are they out there right now? Probably not. They're probably all on teams. Anybody who's worth anything, but I mean, that's an area. Well, before I trade I for think anybody John else, John Ridgeway is that. a lot more aggressive than what we have right now. So. Very much so. That was his thing. He was a high motor player. I mean that. But is well, he? Well, I want to say for whatever it reason was... decided it was a good idea to cut a lot of fun. Ass. I want to say this was a lot of fun, and you guys have a great night. And uh, I'll see who's going to call in tomorrow 
like Dylan said, it takes about 120 shots. But... <laughs> it's nuts, bro. I got. I was gonna get my predictions today to Nick, but he cut me off. I gave my point and stopped talking, and then he uh, he must have thought I was done, uh, even though I said I was gonna give him my picks. And son of a gun, Chris Beam still cut me off. But that's okay. So now I gotta call back in tomorrow and get my prediction. So I'm looking forward to doing this uh, next week. Yes, sir. Next. Uh, you know, I don't know if it'll be next Thursday or not. Actually, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. The Cowboys, the Cowboys are on next Thursday. I don't know so if you maybe. guys want to. It's it's Amazon Prime. It's on. So, like, we can all watch the same. There's no delay. We're so playing. we can hang out and talk. Or we can just watch it separately. Yeah, you guys you guys decide. Yeah. Ah, I'll figure it out. Shouldn't be a delay for okay. anybody. So I, I, be okay. I love chatting during the game. So if you want to. If you want to. Dylan, I'm always, always. I always love talking during the game. All right, yeah, I I might do it. We'll see. See you later, Rob. Oh, he hey, left. Hey right. guys, thanks thanks hey, for coming us again tonight, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining, man. I know you're you're uh, you join in and listen, so thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Maybe yeah, hey guys, week. I got I got I got I got to be getting to, but thank y'all. This was a breath of fresh air for me. Okay, yes, sir. I needed it. I've had a rough couple of weeks, so but I'm back. So all right, bro. We'll Good stuff. Good so stuff. So we'll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take care. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. Good night, everybody. Right, God so, bless. Yeah, sounds like this one's just about wrapped up, y'all. I think we're good to go.